bill would allow multinational corporations to override national laws that protect the environment, consumer rights, and food standards. The so-called investor-to-state dispute settlement has been suspended after 150,000 objections in a European Union consultation exercise. The ISDS would protect foreign investors from decisions by national governments. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, another international trade deal, has also faced heavy scrutiny from the public. The Justice Department will not consider proposals to spare the life of Shokar Zarnaf, one of the alleged bombers of the Boston Marathon. That's according to a report from the Associated Press. The trial to decide what punishment Zarnaf should face will begin in late January. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On January 12th, Swiss authorities seized an automated bot called the Random Darknet Shopper which was programmed to buy products from the Agora marketplace on the deep web. The bot was part of an art exhibit in Switzerland, exploring the implications of robots breaking the law by purchasing from the deep web. The Darknet shopper spent $100 in bitcoins per week, purchasing counterfeit jeans, ecstasy pills, Nike sneakers, cigarettes, and the entire Lord of the Rings series of novels. Agora and other sites on the deep web can only be accessed by special browsers such as Tor. During his State of the Union speech on Tuesday, President Obama will announce a plan to close tax loopholes. The White House says Obama will call for an end to certain loopholes on trust funds, increases in the top tax rates on dividends and capital gains, and impose new fees on financial firms that borrow heavily. Other changes include requiring businesses to automatically enroll employees into individual retirement accounts. The White House proposal would also include tax breaks for families with two working members, child care, and paying college tuition. The Liberty Beat is made possible with the help of Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19th, 2015. Make sure you check out our website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A prison rights group protests the treatment of supervillains in the nation's magnetic detainment cubes. A local dad thought he could make it out of a zoo without buying his kids light up shit. And a pigeon wishes just once it could complete a head movement smoothly. This is the Onion Week in Review. Millions of frustrated Americans across the country asked this week why the nation's struggling mental health system couldn't just get it together and stop feeling sorry for itself. Exasperated citizens told reporters that they had lost all patience with the ailing network's failure to perform basic tasks, such as routine mental health evaluations and emergency counseling. Look, I get it. Everyone goes through a rough patch. Just look at the education system. I know times are tough, but things are never going to improve unless the system decides it wants to get better. In other news, a new study finds that more men are opting to be in the room when their wife conceives their baby. An area man is unaware all of his friends think of him when they want to put things into perspective. And three dozen chemical and emotional responses are activated by the phrase pigs in a blanket. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial right on in toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you got me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And of course, you can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you on the site. Once again, freetalklive.com. Last week, 
We, at this time, were covering the Ross Ulbricht case. It had kicked off on Tuesday of last week and continued on Wednesday and Thursday, taking a break on Friday and Monday. So it's been an extended weekend for uh, the trial going on in Manhattan. This is the man who is uh, accused of being the mastermind behind the online drug marketplace, The Silk Road. That's correct. And in the very first day of the test or not testimony, but the first day, which was opening statements, the defense did admit that Ross Ulbricht was, in point of fact, the programmer behind the Silk Road. So that was a huge bombshell. And they said what they were saying, though, was that he abandoned the site after a number of months relatively soon. He, he just, you know, it was too much pressure. And I imagine it was quite a bit of pressure. I mean, you've got people constantly trying to hack your site. Uh, to try to get at the bitcoins in there, to try to you know just attack the site for the heck of it, uh, for the the ability to be able to say that they hacked the Silk Road. So he had that you know front to deal with. He had the other front to deal with the possible law enforcement invasion, and then on top of that, all the customer complaints and issues that would happen between vendors and buyers on this underground drug darknet marketplace. So imagine there was quite a bit to be juggling there, and he claims he got fed up with it and he handed it off to some other folks. And then somehow, and we haven't gotten to this part of the trial yet, because they're still just on the first uh, prosecution witness, somehow they claim they brought Ross Ulbricht, Ulbricht back in toward the very end in order to set him up as a fall guy for the inevitable bust. So that's the story, as was given in the, uh, the opening statements. Later on in the week, on Thursday, we discovered that the defense is making the case now, or they have tried to make the case, that Mark Carpellis, who is the founder of MT Gox, which is one of the more infamous Bitcoin websites that sort of infamously was very, very big in the beginning. Scammed and then, a bunch of people out of their, their Bitcoins. Yeah, then allegedly scammed people and shut down. So they're saying that this guy, Mark Carpellis, was in point of fact Red Pirate Roberts. And now, it was uh, this weekend we were talking a little bit about the case, and what I pointed out was that I, I had thought... I had heard that on Thursday, the testimony ended, it was cross-examination time, that the testimony ended uh, when the prosecution objected to the, what was going on, the, this line of testimony about Mark Carpellis, and that the judge initially had sided with the defense in that case, that the prosecution objected, saying that their own witness testifying about what he believed to be true prior to him believing it was Ross Ulbricht who was the uh, Dread Pirate Roberts, that his own belief that Mark Carpellis was Dread Pirate Roberts was inadmissible as hearsay. And are you following me? Am yeah, I making it's, this clear? Uh, it's crazy because essentially the government believes they have probable cause to go after a man. That's Mark Carpellis. Um, but... And and they've got the and you've got the the agent who believed this right there on the stand. You can't ask him questions about it. This is a trial about who is the guy who's in charge, the people in charge of uh, the, the Silk Road, and you can't ask them questions about right. somebody they thought might have been the the guy in charge. This yeah, I mean, if you knew what the evidence was, and that's really what you would be looking for, is to get in discovery what the evidence was that this guy was um was dread dread pirate roberts they and did then try to get that evidence out of them again on the stand sure would, would be what i would expect right. they had emails to do i mean they had case. emails from this agent the agent did admit on the stand in front of the jury that he was investigating mark carpellis as dread pirate roberts and then, as uh, Wire.com is reporting here, Andy Greenberg writing for them, and he's been sort of following this whole situation for quite a long time with the Silk Road, even before the bust. He writes, and this was published today, last week produced a stunner in the Silk Road trial, the revelation that the Department of Homeland Security suspected MT Gox CEO Mark Carpellis of running the massive anonymous narcotics market just months before the agency settled instead on the trial's defendant, Ross Ulbricht. But just as quickly, the defense uncovered that alternate theory of the Silk Road's ownership. The prosecution and judge in the case have now shoved key elements of the story back into the closet. Mm. In response to a motion from prosecutors received Monday afternoon, Judge Catherine Forrest ruled Tuesday morning, that's today, 
that key portions of the defense's cross-examination of DHS Special Agent Jared Duryegahan last week would be retroactively declared inadmissible in court. I love this stuff because I think it's interesting when the jury goes, because the jury heard this stuff, right? They did, which is what makes this tricky, right? Because right. it's the cat's out of the bag to some extent. And as reported by John Bush from the Liberty Beat, he was there in the courtroom and he said that he could visually see some jurors reacting to this new information. Yeah. Perhaps, remember, the mood in a, shifted in the room. In a trial, you don't have to prove Carpellis is guilty. In this trial, they don't have to prove he's guilty. They just have to prove a reason by beyond a reasonable doubt, or um, they just have to provide reasonable doubt that Albrecht is um, it you know, might not have done it, whatever yeah. it is that they're accusing. So as long as one juror has reasonable doubt, that'll hang the entire jury, and they yeah. might prosecute him again. But still. but now they're saying to the jury, "Hey, that stuff you heard, that information that your mind has uh, has acquired, you must now get rid of it." Yeah, Obviously, these that. are these are human beings, and that doesn't work that way. But how does? You know, it, I, I, I've always thought this is weird. Really? It's been said in court. Mm -hmm. And what's the big deal? Really? The state? This organization that has all the money in the world to do this prosecution? They, the, the, it's done on their timeline. They got the list of witnesses far in advance and uh, the pros and the defense didn't. Uh, this organization is somehow not getting a fair trial? The state isn't getting something fair? It's ridiculous. The saying among lawyers is you can't unring a bell. Yep. Yep. So Duryegahan had testified uh, that he strongly believed, starting in 2012, that the mysterious administrator of the Silk Road, known as Dread Pirate Roberts, was Carpellis, the CEO of Mt. Gox, which at the time was the world's largest Bitcoin exchange. But the judge declared that testimony had been based on Duryegahan's beliefs rather than competent evidence, and thus should struck uh, should be struck from the record as hearsay or unsubstantiated rumor. Now, I don't think Green Greenberg's going to point this out, but uh, Julia Taransky, who apparently was in the courtroom, or at least she was tweeting about what happened in the courtroom today, apparently it's totally okay by this judge's standards to allow in testimony about Ross Ulbricht allegedly hiring hitmen even though he hasn't actually been criminally charged, uh, as I understand it, with that act. So even though that's a belief without real evidence, because the only evidence they could have that Ross hired a hitman is that Dread Pirate Roberts had messages on the server showing that Dread Pirate Roberts was trying to, uh, to hire a hitman. But that doesn't prove that Ross Ulbricht was the person behind writing those messages. It's, um, this judge has shown at, just a, at every turn at this yep. point. I think there's yeah, been one, what appears to be one ruling that's been in favor of the defense, and there's been some shocking rulings in favor of the prosecution. Things that yeah. I'm like, well, nobody would do that. Like not allowing them to have a witness list until the weekend before the trial. Right. Like that, that one. That's Can you a, imagine that? That's a pretty big deal. <laughs> and uh, The yeah, weekend I, before the trial? Yeah. Yeah. It was just a couple of days. The, the claim oh, was wow. that Ross Ulbricht is such a, uh, uh, a de you know, devious killer mastermind you know drug mastermind that he was going to have the witnesses offed so that they supposedly to protect the witnesses uh prevented the defense from even knowing who they were until the weekend before trial it's crazy wow. it's a crazy uh bastardization of what this uh, western justice system is supposed to be Anyway, continuing on here with uh, Greenberg's report from Wired.com. The judge, Ms. Forrest, said that after the prosecution and defense hashed out exactly which parts of that testimony were based on Der Yegahan's beliefs rather than harder evidence, she would have them removed from the court's transcript and would instruct the jury to disregard those elements of Thursday's questioning, saying, quote, My intent is to give the jury general instructions that Der Yegahan's suspicions and conclusions are to be struck from the record. We'll continue with more of what happened today in the Silk Road Ross Ulbricht trial as it continues here. More on Free Talk Live coming up. Stick around. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. 
These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll continue with more on the Ross Ulbricht trial today, which continued in Manhattan. He's facing most of the rest of his life in prison for uh, allegedly operating one of the most infamous websites known to man, uh, the Silk Road. And I want to continue with that discussion here in a moment. Don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. You can get signed up for our weekly digest news updates, as well as other periodic updates sent out whenever I feel like it. Uh, you can go and get signed up for those over at uh, go to go to freetalklive.com. Look on the left hand side of the page. You'll see the email sign up. I guess what do you call it? A form there. A the space. The spot where you enter your email address and click submit. Go over to freetalklive.com. It's on the left hand side, and you can get hooked up with our weekly emails there. Plus, if you want to follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, you can go to news.freetalklive.com. 
And we will also invite you to join us and buy some gold and silver. Yeah, you can get some gold and silver by going to gold.freetalklive.com. I've been looking at silver prices, and it's just amazing how low they are right now. Um, I expect them to go up, and I have acquired some. And, well, if you want to do... To do that too. You go to gold.freetalklive.com. Midas Resources. That's who we've teamed up here. They they help syndicate us, and we've been do, I've been doing business with them for many years, and they make it easy. It's gold.freetalklive.com. All right. So more to come here on the Ross Ulbricht trial. What's happening in Manhattan? But first, we've got Alma on the line in Tallahassee. Alma, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, sweetie. Hello, Ian. Hey you're on the air. In the guy that Ian, and uh, cheers to him, too. I'm doing the same thing. Cheers to him. I don't know his name. But Rich Paul. For him. <laughs> Love it, too, darling. Yep, go ahead with your thoughts tonight, Alma. All right. What do you think about demons, my darling? Uh, I have a husband who has... It's a made-up concept demons. by he Nan has two to... in him, and I know it. To what? I know my husband has two in him. He demons. He is... He will wake up on the couch. He has talked. He has talked fluent French to me. He has talked fluent <laughs> Spanish to me. And uh, how do you he know is. he's fluent? Are you also fluent in French and Spanish? Oh no, I've heard it before. My son studies Greek and stuff on the. Even if I, he's talking something like French, that would well, be interesting, you know what right? He said to me, "I have a breathing problem. I almost died one night. I've died before." And uh, I can tell you that another story. I died, and I know what heaven looks like. I went there. But I uh, almost died this night a few weeks ago, and and I told my son. I pointed at him, and I said, wake him up, because I have a breathing problem. I can't breathe, and I go out. And uh, he he stood up, and he laughed and said, coup de gras. And we, me and my son discussed it after that. And he laid down and went to sleep, and he got up, and he went in horror, like, what's going on? But he laughed at me that I was dying, and I, my son says, what was it you said, buddy? I said, it sounds like it's French to me, son. And I know you, my son said it's French, and I said, it sounds like die, exactly what it was, French and die. And now he's, now he's talking Spanish. Wait, so he's talking Spanish right now? Oh, when he goes to sleep on the couch. Ah, okay. So there's a regular thing that happens. Now, is did he actually get, you know, educated in school perhaps on no, French and Spanish? No, he can't even barely talk English. He just <laughs> talking fast as that. Don't tell me. But I when he sleeps, he's a cunning he linguist. Don't make right here now, dude. Well, right. It's an interesting story, Alma. I don't know if it means that demons exist. I mean, <laughs> I love oh, it. Demons do exist. And I know I've seen one on his back before because I like I said, I, really, I have died once before. Was it the French speaking things. one or the Spanish speaking one? Oh, the Spanish. I don't know what he said. My son only heard one word because we were watching a show. Esta is all he heard. <laughs> OK. Uh, so, so he, he spoke two times. And I'm saying, listen, he is he's loony taking over here. Let me tell you what. And I hate to say Here's this. what you I'm should not. do is you got to grab a video camera when this happens yeah, next time. Yeah, what I said. You know what? My son woke me up years ago, that, and I was asleep from work. I was give out. And he goes, Mama, get up. He was just a child. He said, Daddy's eating bullets. Oh, God, the man that's was no good. Eating People do bullets. some very strange things when they're asleep. It doesn't mean that they oh, are no, demons. This is Almost, not demons. Thank you for the call tonight. <laughs> I appreciate it. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon for people to babble in their sleep, to say nonsensical things. I've had more than Apparently, one. Apparently, it's not uncommon for people to babble when they're awake either. <laughs> no, no. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Toll free numbers 855 450 free. Um, I mean, I've had more. Multiple girlfriends who've talked gobbledygook nonsense uh, in you know when they're dead asleep. It's funny, it's amusing, but I've never really believed that it is any sort of evidence of spiritual demons or something. Next time like she that. sees the demons, you look for a beret or a sombrero, and then you'll find out whether it's the uh, the French speaking or the Spanish speaking demon. So, Mark, uh, Rich, Paul, what are your thoughts on the uh, the idea of demons? Uh never seen one never seen evidence <laughs> of one if uh i don't know if somebody shows me some evidence then That's... i might believe it or i might decide that there's something wrong with my sensory equipment I certainly don't know. possible Mark. yeah I, you know i'm willing to go so far as there's a god 
I'm not willing to go any further than that. Like, you know, there's a devil, there's angels, there's demons, these kind of things. It seems like just an excuse or a story or an explanation for bad behavior on the part of human beings. But it's a very old story, and I think that this is what right. gives it some credence, right? Like, there's the stories of demons are far older than the well, stories of Christ. People, for a long time, have been mm. acting like it wasn't them who was responsible for their actions. It wasn't, it wasn't me, it was the demons. Uh, you know, so I well, didn't kill that girl. Speaking of like her husband, and most uh, of the things that they identified as as demons have scientific explanations now. Later on, when, yeah, when people would go like sickness, would freak out, they would try to beat the devil out of them because they believed they sure. were inhabited by demons. Sure, but, and, and sickness was but beating uh, the devil out of them didn't work any better than the drug war. So, right, and of course, uh, you know, classic example is that people getting sick was blamed on demons, but then turns out it was just bad sanitation, right? Like you started having, uh, you know, sewage pipes and things to keep the sewage from the streets, and all of a sudden the demons went away. All of a sudden everybody's, you know, healthier. Well, sometimes so, when now, I of wake course, up, a pet ant might say they used to believe that, uh, that disease was caused by little beings called uh, demons when it's now uh, little beings called then, bacteria and now they believe it's little beings called bacteria <laughs> so you know maybe that maybe only the names have That's been changed, changed to uh, protect the innocent but so, um <laughs> this happens when you wake up sometimes you do strange things like sometimes i wake up and just spit and what? I just spit. I just wake up. Sometimes like I'll a, sit like a, straight like up. Like a cock or no, like just, dribble out of your mouth? No, or? just a, huh. like just a, sort of that air spit thing. Oh. You know, not the, I don't clear my throat and spit. Yeah. I just a, sort of that air spit thing. Okay, yeah. And if huh. there's spit in my mouth, I'll spit across the room. Mm. I just got to get a tissue That's unusual. What about the one where people feel like they're being held down when they wake they up? They are being held down uh, because they have the, in, in your, when you're in REM state and you're dreaming about moving and that sort of thing, your body goes into a paralysis state so you don't harm yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, that's that's a reality. You are being held down by yourself. Right, but people haven't come to enough consciousness yet to where they've regained control of their motor functions, and so it feels like they have no control. Sometimes you tear yourself out of that and yell. Bah! I've never, I've never had that experience, but some people apparently have, and it's pretty scary for them. 855, 450, free. More coming up. Did you go to guns80.com and get your AR-15 yet? I took my buddy Mark out to lunch the other day to thank him for turning me on to guns80.com. And suddenly our old pal Dan showed up and joined us. Of course, Mark immediately started selling him on the great deals at guns80.com and told him how you can buy a brand new rifle at a great price, keep your privacy and how it can be delivered right to your front door. And that there was no visit to a gun dealer involved. There are no government papers to fill out. Dan was such an easy sell. He just pulled out his iPhone right there and went to guns80.com and ordered his ghost AR. Wow. You can call guns80.com right now. Their number is 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. By the way, demand they pay market commission, okay? Call guns80.com at 844-2-GUNS-80 and demand they pay Mark, please. He deserves a commission. Go to 844-2-GUNS-80 and get your Ghost AR-15 on the web at guns80.com. Go now. Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. No, Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999. 
and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to dial in toll-free and bring up anything on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're going to continue with the latest from the trial of Ross Ulbricht. He's the man accused of running the Silk Road, the underground drug marketplace that was taken down by the FBI back in late 2013. He's on trial. He's facing the rest of his life in prison. It's expected to be a four- to six-week-long trial and uh, Rich Paul's joining us in studio tonight. He's got a, a little bit of experience being in drug-related criminal courts. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get into a little bit more about that here in a moment. But one thing's for sure, whatever you're doing online, your privacy matters. And if you want to protect your privacy, you do have to take steps in order to do that. You can't just rely on your internet service provider to protect you. Odds are good they're the ones invading your privacy. Your ISP's probably logging the websites you visit, probably logging all the search terms you enter, and maybe keeping those logs for, in some cases, as long as five years. You can put a stop to that by just going and downloading ProXPN. You go get it for free at proxpn.com slash FTL. You download their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices, plus Linux users. You can also get set up with ProXPN. Once you get rolling with ProXPN, then your internet connection is encrypted, meaning that whoever it is that was snooping on you before, they're not going to be able to know what you're up to now. So uh, it's very useful. And with their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. All of it for about 5 bucks a month using our discount code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And the number 50 gets you 50% off the price of their annual account. And by the way, that price is locked in for the lifetime of your account. So even when you're renewing for another year, you're still going to get that deep discount by using code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. proxpn.com slash FTL. So let's continue here with more more on the Silk Road trial that uh, picked up today, again, in a Manhattan federal district courtroom. The jury, according to uh, Andy Greenberg, who's the author over at Wired, that's been really covering this case in great detail. I think we've read a Andy Greenberg post every single night that the trial has gone on. He's uh, done a great job covering this. And as he's pointed out here, the one of the first things that happened today is that the judge basically instructed the jury to ignore certain testimony that was given on Thursday. So the testimony given on Thursday was in regards to MT Gox founder Mark Carpellis uh, and his alleged operation of the Silk Road, which was kind of the big bombshell news uh, from Thursday. And so now the judge is saying that anything that has 
that is like a belief of the agent in question here, the federal agent, Der Jägerhan. Anything that is one of his beliefs should be struck from the record as hearsay, unless it's what she called competent evidence. They should be striking that uh, those, those items from their minds that they already experienced on Thursday. So going on here, uh, Ulbricht's defense, of course, strongly protested that decision. Uh, Joshua Dreytel. <laughs> I don't just object. I strongly object. Joshua. <laughs> well, I've strongly overruled you, son. Sit down. Joshua Dreytel is the lead defense attorney. He said, uh, quote, to completely eviscerate the defense after the fact is unfair, pronouncing the last word in two separate syllables. He continued to debate the point. I'm for pretty sure that unfair is two separate syllables. Yeah, you, you kind of have to do it with two syllables. Well, I now, guess if you're from the South, it's three. Over. Unfair. <laughs> Greenberg, I think, is uh, pointing out he put a lot of stress on that particular I gotcha. word. I'm just giving... He continued to debate the point for much of the morning. I put more stress on it by talking about it. In open court and private discussions with the judge and prosecution, I'm done with this issue, Forrest, the judge, eventually told Draytel. I'm not suggesting you should like it or agree with it, but that's the way we're going to proceed. Just five days earlier, Dre tells Germanic, My handlers in the United States federal government, whom I wish to yeah, keep on the good side so that I can continue to move up and then my federal judge yeah. judgeship, wouldn't like it if I didn't do something here. Just five days earlier, Dre tells dramatic cross-examination of Der Yegehan elicited a long list of evidence that the Homeland Security investigator once suspected Carpellis had been the Silk Road's shadowy administrator. The evidence included an affidavit he had written to a judge asking for a warrant to search Carpellis's email accounts, a private email in which he asked fellow DHS colleagues not to tip off Carpellis to his investigation, and another internal email in 2013 citing an interview I conducted with the Dread Pirate Roberts. Der Yegahan wrote that the writing of Silk Road administrators, or the Silk Road's administrator in that interview sounds quite a lot like Carpellis. But all of those points, the prosecution argued in its follow-up letter to the judge, violated the court's rules of evidence. Quote, the line of questioning is improper insofar as it is focused on Special Agent Der Yegahan's state of mind during his investigation, wrote prosecutors. Indeed, an agent's beliefs often rest on hearsay, hunches, or other information that is not in itself admissible. Yes, but we're taught all the time on TV cop shows that... Uh, uh you know that these things matter and believe me in court it, the, the stake is it's hunches in all the time the defense cannot circumvent the evidentiary rules prohibiting the admission of such information by having the agent testify about what he believed at various points during the investigation or why he believed it judge forrest ultimately agreed she told the defense that it could bring up any of the evidence that might have raised or yegahan's suspicion of carpellis such as his ties to the website silkroadmarket.org a page that provided instructions on accessing the silk road drug market but she ruled out any statements about the suspicions or conclusions that der yegahan had reached based on that evidence in its filing Monday, the prosecution attacked that Silk Road Market uh, .org connection, too. Prosecutors wrote that the Department of Homeland Security investigation had subsequently revealed that Carpellis had not, in point of fact, registered Silk Road Market .org, mm. but that it had instead been registered by Ulbricht using Carpellis's web hosting company, Kaylee Host. Quote, the fact that the defendant used Mr. Carpellis's web hosting service to host the SilkRoadMarket.org website turned out to be the only connection that Der Yegahan ever found between the website and Mr. Carpellis. It seems like the big mistake on the judge's part would be, and it's not really on the judge's part, it's on the prosecutor's part. I mean, when questions were being given to... Uh, to that person to say, you know, did you believe at this time that um, that so and so was Dread Pirate uh, Pirate Roberts? Then it would have been perfectly acceptable for the prosecution to say objection that calls for a conclusion. Right? They should have done it at the time. Reasonable, exactly. It should have been done at the time, and it seems like. I don't see how they can surgically excise now the parts that should have been 
or would have pro- it's too presumably too succumbed to an objection right. had the objection been forthcoming. Yeah, and made properly in its proper time. And that's one of the reasons why Dre Tell is so upset here. He's This is five days later. I mean, we haven't been in court for you know a long while here, and now you want the jury to pluck that from their minds? This is ridiculous. Well, it's ridiculous because obviously the jury can't pluck it from their minds, uh, but it should be interesting. It's to me what the, what's most interesting about this is just how much of this can we expect from the judge? How much of it is the jury going to see? Because I I, I believe I'm biased when it, it comes to this case. So, but what I see here is, is I see a judge that is clearly biased. She's pulling out all the stops. Yeah. And uh, but. What what's it look like to the jury? What's it look like to just sort of your average outsider too? Somebody who doesn't have a horse in this race? Because to me, this looks like this guy isn't getting a fair trial. I mean, I am outraged. I'm ashamed uh, of people that uh, you know of this of to be an American, right? Like one of the things that you believe in the United States of America is that you know we got a lot of messed up crap in this country, but at least we have one of the best judicial systems in the world. This just looks like a miscarriage of justice to me. So that's um, oh, go ahead. It, there's there are some things in this case that strike me as pretty egregious. The uh, the apparently there was a Fourth Amendment objection raised uh, to the FBI breaking into a server, and it was overcome because the judge said, "Well, you can't prove that the server is actually yours, and therefore you get no Fourth that's Amendment." Right protection in it well if you can't prove it's mine then let's dismiss the case and i'll go home oh they tried to motion to dismiss more than once and she uh, refused all of those and in fact the defense's motions have never been very successful more coming up shiny badges on your jacket shiny badges this is davi barker from shinybadges.com and i just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week month after month that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm so to make it up to you i'm offering a free gift the next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com write worms in the transaction comments and i'll send you something weird Lose the winter blues and warm up with hot flooring deals from Lumber Liquidators. Thinking about hardwood? Can serve bamboo? We've got the number one brand and we'll help you get it for less. Like Strand Bamboo. It's twice as hard as oak and for a limited time, it's only $1.99. Why pay as much as $4.99 for bamboo at other stores? We've got deals on over 70 styles from an incredible $1.79. Plus, pre-finished hardwood, laminate, and more for less than half what you'll pay somewhere else. And 18 months special financing. Now is the time to warm up your home with new floors. So visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you you in the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about the Silk Road, the Ross Ulbricht trial, which continued in Manhattan today. Uh, we shared the news that a lot of the claims that were made about Mark Harpelis, the administrator of this uh, MT Gox, who'd been accused of running the Silk Road in defense cross-examination on Thursday, a lot of that testimony has been booted out after the fact. Now, you know, five days later, the judge has instructed the jury to ignore any of that testimony that had to do with the agent's beliefs at the time about who was running the Silk Road. We'll continue the discussion here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, Ian Rich and Mark in the studio here tonight. You can join us via Skype, by the way. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And we're going to continue with more uh, Ross Ulbricht-related coverage. Plus, coming up, Mark, you've got a story about police violence, the violence of the police against people like you and I. Uh, we'll get into that here in a moment. It's kind of uh, some shocking numbers, I guess, that uh, that you have. But there was an RT story that just came across. I, I'm following the Twitter feed for Pound Silk Road Trial and just to kind of see what people are saying about the trial, what news is is coming out. RT, Russia Today, just posted a video, kind of a summary, maybe a three-minute long summary of this. It's not worth playing on the air because it just kind of goes over some of the territory we've already been down. But one of the things that was new in that particular summary that I had not yet seen is they, they're they saying, and maybe this happened in testimony this afternoon. I haven't seen anything about really kind of the later afternoon what, what happened. But they're saying that the defense is trying to poke holes in some of the screenshots that have been introduced as evidence by the prosecution, which, of course, you know, that makes sense if you can somehow poke holes in that because, you know, it's not hard to make screenshots up out of thin air to have a graphics professional get into their Photoshop program and modify the hell out of whatever it is that that you want. I mean, you can make things look very, very convincing. With Photoshop these days. You can sure create a couple sock puppet accounts on uh, Facebook and set up a dialogue between two accounts you control very easy with whatever names you choose. Yeah, and who can prove anything about that? Yeah. So Also, I mean, you know, you could just, you can put literally anything you want. You could just build build it graphically from scratch if that's what you wanted to do. Right. And so that's, I think that's pretty concerning considering that this case is likely going to rely on a lot of screenshots. It's going to rely on a lot of text logs. It's going to lie, uh, rely on stuff that's relatively simple for even... Mm-hmm. You know, lower technically inclined people, people that, you know, like Mark, even he could probably get in and give him Windows Paint or something like that. He tries best. But I mean, even somebody with a modicum of skill can mess with graphics. But let me ask you, let me ask you this, though. I mean, now you're saying what it sounds to me like what they're saying is, is that I, as a juror, have to believe that my government is somehow fabricating evidence. And it'll be hard for juries to take that. Yeah, they there's certainly mm. lots of evidence, but this is a highly watched case, and there's a lot of tech people that are kind of keeping an eye on it and that kind of thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'd like to know more about the the screenshots, but mm-hmm. I. Uh, that's that's a tough road to hoe. Now, if you're saying that, well, right? You know, I don't. I know very very little about this. It's just sort of mentioned as part of RT's report. So that's so far the yeah. only confirmation I've seen that the defense is doing this. And I don't understand why they would be doing that during cross examination. That doesn't seem 
likely that they would take that approach. But then again, that's just my speculation. What the hell do I know about that? So uh, we can continue here. You can share your thoughts on the Silk Road, 855-450 free, or more specifically, the trial of Ross Ulbricht, who has admitted to being the creator of the Silk Road. So I think that's going to be a tough thing for him to avoid being found guilty of all of the charges uh, as a result of that. But, but he's already been in jail for like how long? For over a year. Over a year, going on two years. And uh, so, I mean, he's got a certain amount of time served. But I, it's like 15 months. Yeah, I was kind of of the opinion that uh, early on when we went into this that, you know, he's just screwed. But after some of this information's come out, I now I'm kind of, well, you know, I might have a reasonable doubt that he was entirely responsible for everything that was done by the account known as Dread Pirate Roberts. And this is an important yeah. thing to know is, is that it just because there's an account out there doesn't mean that one person runs it. I mean, think about it for a second. How many husbands and wives do you know that share an email account, especially older ones? Yeah, and I think they yeah. made that point. With this. Um, the other thing is, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Technical. So uh, we can get back to that here in a moment. But uh, the, over at the LibertyBeat.com, they have been following this case in great detail. And there was a post which obviously goes over some of what Greenberg's post covers written by Jonathan Walter, and this is just from the earlier portion of the testimony today. They haven't released their afternoon report, which is going to summarize some more of what happened, but I want to pick up after the discussion about uh, what could be entered, what would you know be considered, I guess, questions that they'd ask the, the agent on Thursday that could stay on the record. So the judge gave a few examples of questions that would be prohibited like, did you suspect Carpellis with Dread Pirate Roberts? Did you think Ross was Dread Pirate Roberts? She also gave examples of acceptable questions to the attorneys like, do you have evidence of who ran the Silk Road servers? And is there evidence of Silk Road profits going to other accounts? It was determined that anything previously entered into the record that was speculative or merely an opinion would be stricken. It was at this point that the jury entered the room for the first time at around 12 p.m. The judge stated to the jury that just because things are stricken from the record, that it doesn't mean anything to them. Draytel began by questioning Agent Der Yegahan. It doesn't mean anything to them? Like they can use that in their decision-making process? I think it was an awkward way of phrasing that they're supposed to strike uh, the evidence from the record, meaning that they mm. they can't – it can't mean anything to them. Oh, what I they see. heard on, on Thursday cannot mean anything to them from here on out. Uh, Dreytel began by questioning Agent Der Yegahan about the, so they're still in cross-examination here, about the usernames Peace, Love, Harmony, and Mr. Wonderful. Der Yegahan responded that he did not know who Peace, Love, Harmony was, and that Mr. Wonderful was an agent. Dreytel went on to ask about conversations between Dread Pirate Roberts and username Scout about investigating Mr. Wonderful as a possible agent, and also asked if Dread Pirate Roberts took over the Scout account for the purposes of the investigation. The state objected about the latter question, and the defense restated by showing a Silk Road forum post about the matter. Der Yegahan responded that he did not know why Dread Pirate Roberts took over the account, and that he never had access to Scout, a username which would later be changed to Cirrus, and then taken over by Agent Der Yegahan. So again, this agent spent like over a thousand hours on this website, apparently, acting as one of the administrators of the Silk Road. So he, in his role... Uh, performing as Cirrus. So Cirrus was was someone who wasn't an agent. He got busted, basically handed over the account information to the feds. This agent then took over the account and began to act as though he was Cirrus, the administrator of the site. Mm. And so it was using the, that Cirrus account that they got more evidence, obviously, you know, to, to point to the allegations they're making. Uh, and by the way, the Cirrus account, the, as uh, one of the undercovers on the site, this undercover agent did admit to buying and selling drugs. So just to be clear, the federal government bought and sold drugs in order so that they could then take down the website on which they bought and sold drugs. Nah, they do that all the time. I mean, that's just their their thing. Well, it's okay if, for them to buy and sell right, drugs. Right. If buying and selling drugs for you and I is uh, you know, something that's going to land us in prison for an, an indeterminate period of time. But for the federal government, it's just part of an investigation. Yeah, yeah. That's about right. Yeah, the, it all seems very fuzzy, especially with uh, with accounts being operated. They're acknowledging by different people at different mm -hmm. times 
with the federal snitch having access to the you know the software innards of yeah the administrator stuff yeah. if he had administrative access uh, i would i would be asking questions like did he have direct access to the database because if he did and he had right access he could have fabricated anything he wanted directly he in the database he certainly could have done that from a remote location and we also know the feds you know they grabbed the server as well at some point they took a copy of the server and certainly they at that point could then have uh, created any evidence that they wanted to well they're mm. ready to lay you better be ready to lay down and die if your case rests on trying to convince the jury that uh, police officers have are going to fabricate evidence fabricated Fabricating evidence. I mean, they people are convicted every day in this country based yeah. entirely on the word of police officers. I think it's ridiculous. I think you should have audio video, video evidence of uh, police officers should have audio video evidence of of all of their criminal investigations um, here when it's so easy that I'm carrying around a camera in my pocket every day. The defense then went on to question Der Yegahan about his knowledge regarding the shutdown of Silk Road and the site moving to a different dot onion address. Dot onion is the extension that you see when you're using Tor, which is this anonymous sort of uh, dark net internet. Their Yegahan answered that he was uh, that he was aware of that happening, although only through forum posts, and didn't know for sure whether it had happened or not. There were also questions related to Dread Pirate Roberts' PGP key not validating his messages on certain occasions. Der Yegahan confirmed this, but he said he didn't look into whether or not it was resolved. There's more coming up here in moments. You can take control. Plus, one researcher says he's linked 20% of Ulbricht's bitcoins to Silk Road accounts. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. We're coming up on Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kingdom, the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, January 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.79 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,278 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $211. Antiwar.com reports, according to a spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin, his Ukrainian counterpart, Petro Poroshenko, rejected a proposal to move forward with the peace process between the Ukrainian government and the Eastern rebels. The proposal was a fairly modest advance on the current ceasefire, calling for both sides to withdraw heavy artillery away from combat areas and into areas where they would not be so conveniently used. 
Russian officials said that not only had Poroshenko rejected the proposal, but that he had almost immediately ordered a new round of offensives in the southeast, which Russia warned violated the Minsk agreement already in place. Both Russia and the OSCE have called for a return to calm, but it seems that the ceasefire is tottering after months of relative calm, with fighting in several places, including the rebel capital of Donetsk. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, according to a new study, people who work 48 hours a week or more are likely to drink alcohol more heavily. The study looked at data from over 330,000 people in 14 different countries. It found people who work more than the average work week were 11% more likely to engage in heavy drinking. Heavy drinking is considered 14 or more drinks per week for a woman or 21 or more drinks per week for a man. Considering the study analyzed people from 14 countries, 11% translates to 2 million people drinking heavily because of their jobs. The team of researchers wrote, The workplace is an important setting for the prevention of alcohol misuse because more than half of the adult population are employed. Further research is needed to assess whether preventative interventions against risky alcohol use could benefit from information on working hours. The study was published by the British Medical Journal. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. All of your funds on Coinbase are safe, with approximately 90% of customer funds being stored offline and all wallets are stored using AES-256 encryption. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The LA Times reports President Obama will focus on middle-class economics in his State of the Union speech Tuesday, unveiling a message designed to challenge newly empowered Republicans on economic policy in the final two years of his presidency. White House advisor Dan Pfeiffer said in an interview on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday, it's the simple position that now that the economy is in a stronger place than it has been in a very long time, we need to double down on our efforts to deal with wage stagnation and declining economic mobility. The White House has already released the policies it hopes to use to frame the debate. On Saturday, officials said the president would call on Congress to raise taxes on top earners and impose a new fee on large financial firms to pay for tax credits aimed at low- and middle-class families. The $320 billion in new revenue would be used to pay for expanded higher education benefits, child care tax credits, and retirement programs. Pfeiffer acknowledged the plans aren't tailored to appeal to Republicans who took complete control of Congress this month. Are they going to agree on everything? He asked. Absolutely not, but I think we should have the debate in this country between middle class economics and trickle down economics and see if we can come to an agreement on the things we do agree on. Republicans quickly rejected the White House's proposal. Senator Marco Rubio from Florida, also speaking on Face the Nation, called the president's tax plan an outdated model that no longer works in the 21st century. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's a landmark day in the March for Equality here in America. Congress passed the Casinos for Fairness Act today, which gives every mistreated group in America the right to open a casino. It worked with Native Americans. It will work for the rest of the country. If our society has kept you down, you will get a casino to pull yourselves back up. Veterans will also have the right to open a casino as a replacement for costlier benefit programs. I think it'd be nice to have a casino. I mean, I'd rather still be able to walk, but, you know. 
While the majority of the country is handling the Casino Act as a step forward, many Native Americans are objecting to the law. We are still the most disadvantaged group in America. So all that we ask is that we be allowed to open whorehouses and start legally selling cocaine. The bill raised the question of whether immigrants should be allowed to own casinos. After much debate, the legislature decided that they would not, but they will be able to sell sliced mango on the street without a vendor license. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here and bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. More on the Silk Road case. Ross Ulbricht is facing the rest of his life in prison, for the most part, uh, for ostensibly being Dread Pirate Roberts, the operator of the most infamous underground website in probably all of history, the Silk Road. I think it's fair to give Silk Road that, that level of accolade. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, by the way, with you in the studio, it's Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. And our phone call, our phone number here is 855-450-FREE. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts, then coming up more about the Ulbricht case. Uh, but first, Dave in Poughkeepsie, New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Dave. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good, Dave. Go ahead. I will not, to- I will, I will not be told what to do. Well, I bet you will, but go ahead. I am being stalked on Hudson Valley's Craigslist rants and raves by... A sibling, oh, well, not my, but like my, my brother and his band of misfits keep telling me, oh, you know, stop posting on Craigslist, we don't see raise. Oh, we're, we're Your, there. Your we're, own we're, brother is stalking you? With his band of misfits. Who, now, who is his band of misfits? Are they an actual band or are they like a, like a criminal gang? Or I like the misfits. Yeah, who, who are these misfits? His friends. I have no idea. All, all of his friends keep telling me, oh, because if you go on Hudson Valley's Craigslist rant to raise, you know, they'll, people will tell me, oh, because, like, I'm tired of people poking fun and making fun of me. It has to end. I'm sick and tired <laughs> of people making fun of me. You know, Dave, it, Dave, how long have you been stop. calling Free Talk Live now? When was the, do you remember when the first time you called Free Talk Live was? Uh, I'd say maybe uh, 15, 14, maybe three years ago. I have no I don't idea. know if it's been that long. I was thinking two years. But yeah, it seems like you've been calling for at least a solid year and a half, if not two years. And the very first call you made was, it sounded a lot like this. I Just, think it was probably the same website with the same, yes. uh, in the same area. Craigslist, Hudson The brother Valley. thing is new. The brother's new. Yeah. Uh, but your original complaint when you called the show is was the new brother? No, no, no. There's him telling us that his brother's now stalking him is a new twist on the same old story for Dave. Dave, oh, okay. uh, for those that aren't familiar with him, Dave is a YouTuber. He's got a couple of different YouTube channels. Uh, his YouTube channel, one of them is Hudson Valley Guy in the number one. He, before I think even getting on YouTube, used to go on these local message boards uh, that were relating to the Hudson okay, Valley. Okay, we got the idea. We get the idea. But like, I'm no, 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 Dave, no, 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 no. We message. know you've got the idea. I'm going to put you on hold here because I want to explain for our <laughs> listeners, for our listeners exactly, you know, to give them a little history so they they know really where we're coming from on how we're responding to this call. Because if it weren't Dave calling in about this, then you know we'd probably be responding differently. Well, but no, when, I think my response is going to be the same um, in these circumstances, but. Yeah, but I think we would handle it a little bit differently with somebody who wasn't Dave. Because well, you know, when you give the same advice over and over again, and somebody yeah. doesn't listen to it, right. uh, perhaps that uh, the tone might change somewhat. Right. But the over and over again links back to it being Dave. It, I mean, it it's not oh, that yes. it's Dave personally; it's somebody who has followed this pattern that that Dave has apparently followed. Well, and and I'm, is- I'm glad to know there's backstory because I really couldn't make head or tails of what he was. Trying to say to us. So Dave, it seems like for Dave's history of being on the internet, that he has had problems. That he has had... It's always somebody else picking on Dave. Right. Dave feels upset because people are picking on him. They're calling him names. They're making fun of him. They're saying that he's a welfare queen, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Is he a welfare queen? Well, you can ask him that when we bring him back on the air here in a moment. Now, there's an argument for and against it, and Dave will make the argument against it. But, uh, But... before we go on, so Dave has uh, has had tough times on the internet on certain places, and it's been so bad that some of these people that uh, give him a hard time online, they will follow Dave to other places that he goes. So 
when Dave showed up on Free Talk Live, somehow... The BBS. On our BBS, on our forum online at freetalklive.com, uh, somehow some of his old buddies from these old message boards showed up there to give him a hard time. Now, it's not like Dave didn't do anything so to this deserve this. this is actually documented that there there is a group of oh, people... Yes. That yes. are somehow, but but the and, reason and you're for sure it, this isn't all just Dave. Well, well no, is, no, is it's this man chosen all... by proxy? No, we had a caller call in as well, so there's been another okay. person. But but the thing you're missing here, because I haven't really explicated it, Rich, is that Dave starts all of this. He goes into these forums and he's very rude. He is very hard to get along with, and I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. But he's essentially trolling these forums, and so he's basically getting back what he's putting out there uh, into the internet. And when it so happens Dave to is him, Graham. <laughs> when it happens to uh, Dave, he's upset about it, and that's what brings him to his call tonight. You're still upset, Dave, because you actually haven't given up on these forums as we suggested that you do, uh, like two years ago. You haven't given up on this. Just call it quits, man. It's not working out for you. First of all, first of all, I am not a welfare queen at all. All right, I do have a part-time job. I'm not going to say where I work, but yes, I do have a part-time job. Awesome. Second, second of all, um, I am sick and tired of people poking fun at me. It has to stop. I'm sick and tired of all of these. My my, my brother got a whole bunch of his band of visits or, or whatever the his, his friends, whatever you know, always saying, "Oh, you if I if, I, if you feel constantly posting on Craigslist, this friends you raise, or we're, we're going to come and, and and beat you up, blah blah blah, whatever." Did you they know. come and beat oh. you up? All I have to do is just call 911. I can call 911 very quickly. And but have did the band of misfits, uh, Dave, did they actually come and beat you up? Did they even show up at your house? Not yet, but I am. Okay, it's not I'm, stalking. I'm, I'm prepared. I, I am. Yeah, that's, that is stalking. It's not, no. I, I, no. Yes, it is stalking. No. Well, because it if, if you, might if you be some on, kind of. If you go on Craigslist and, and, read, and read some of the posts on there, they're saying, oh, if you come, we, we, we know where you I live, blah, blah, blah. If you're you know. threatening to harm somebody physically, I think that falls into the realm of harassment. That's legally. definitely threatening, criminal threatening. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. But to now, call it the stalking because someone with says Dave, you're, I don't necessarily believe that he wasn't doing the same thing. Now, Dave has uh, threatened to right. come over here to Keene, New Hampshire, and beat us up. That's right. So, uh, you know, I mean, oh. I, 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 I mean, <laughs> I I'll know. do you, Dave. He also threatened a guy in Alaska <laughs> as yeah, well. I'm going to go to Alaska and get you. So, Dave, and isn't it possible that you're actually just creating this through your own actions? I am just sick and tired of people poking fun at All me. Right. It has to stop. Good luck now. with well, that, Dave. Because these people are, you know. You know Dave, if if you go out and you troll people and you get upset when they respond I'm trollishly, then people are going to call you Lord Butthurt. It's, Th- thanks for the call, it's gonna happen. Good luck. And yes, you are. Thanks for the call. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. But if you want to see for yourself, I guess you could go to the Hudson Valley Craigslist Rants and Raves, and yeah. <laughs> you can see all the evidence for yourself. Have now, fun. Now, I'll be clear. I haven't gone. I haven't looked. But I have seen how Dave behaves on the Free Talk Live BBS, and it is very unneighborly. It is something <laughs> that uh, you would not want to have around. If you are operating a forum where you want people to you know, have discussions or whatever, and I don't know what goes on on Rants and Raves it, doesn't sound Craig's like a friendly sounds place. Sounds like anything goes on. Um, but, you know, if you want to have a forum where people are having a good time, where people want to come back, you generally don't want people attacking one another and, you know, being vicious online towards one another. And, and that's what Dave can do. You know, he's not uh, a very nice guy online. Well, then I'm going to say fornicate, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Toll free numbers 855 450 free. But it's not stalking if somebody sends you a threatening message on Facebook or on Craigslist or something like that. It's not nice. It's definitely threatening. And, you know, you could certainly say there's that, that it's a criminal activity. But I don't think that rises to the level of stalking. Your thoughts are welcome. The toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. So here's uh, some more news about the Silk Road. And then coming up, Mark, you'll be telling us about the police killing people and how often they do it. Killing, like, innocent people, not bad guys. Story from... Well, it's killing people. Oh, really? Just so bad guys included? Okay, I didn't realize that. So anyway, ArsTechnica.com has a story about Ulbricht's Bitcoins. Ross Ulbricht, the alleged operator of the Silk Road... One of their researchers is claiming he's linked 20% of Ulbricht's bitcoins to Silk Road accounts. Ross Ulbricht was back in a Manhattan federal courtroom today 
facing drug trafficking and money laundering charges for allegedly running the Silk Road online drug marketplace. A few hours ago, computer security researcher Nicholas Weaver published some an, uh, analysis about Bitcoin that he say, excuse me, that he says came from Ross Ulbricht's accounts. If the government has done a similar analysis, and there's no reason to think they couldn't, it will be one more obstacle for Ulbricht's defense team. I'll tell you more about it here in a moment. You can also share your thoughts. 855-453-855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right. Every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of The Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. (laughs) 
Free Talk Live. You bring up anything you want right here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features for free. If you want to get a free pound of coffee, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. There you can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee. It's Buzzbox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. And now coffee is a very absorbent crop, and so the organic certification is that much more important there, especially when you're talking about coffee being grown in countries where, yeah, you know, maybe they don't have the same rules on pesticides or uh, leaded gas, those kind of things. That's why I choose BuzzBox, among the reasons why I choose BuzzBox. Another reason is, is because they do things differently. They give back some of the proceeds to us uh, to give out as microloans to people around the world so that uh, we can improve their lot in life. Human freedom is really important, but it has to have some kind of basis on, uh, you know, owning something, <laughs> possessing something. So go check it out at coffee.freetalklive.com. We've helped many, dozens and dozens of people, and uh, we'd love to help more. All right, we'll continue with more from the Silk Road. One investigator, not with the feds, just an independent computer security researcher, has said that he has determined that 20% of Ross Ulbricht's personal Bitcoin collection came from the Silk Road. We'll tell you more about that, but Craig is on the line first listening in Brooklyn, Craig, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich, and Mark. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Craig. Go ahead with your thoughts. Greg. Hey. Um, oh. So continuing with the Internet theme, uh, with Obama, I think, set to deliver the State of the Union tomorrow, um, I wanted to ask about where you guys stand on net neutrality. Uh, I haven't really been following, uh, so sorry if you've already said it, but I'm just curious because obviously it's uh, – Sort of, you could take either side as a libertarian. And also, what do you guys think about municipal fiber uh, rising up to challenge the uh, duopoly of, you know, Time Warner, just the uh, sort of increasing consumer choice? What do you guys think I've got to say, I'm really excited about the monopoly rising up to take on the duopoly. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I expect only the best for human freedom out of monopolies. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll share that. As far as net neutrality yeah. goes, I find this to be very difficult. I am not technically savvy. Uh, we, I think it was la the last week or the week before last, had on a rep from uh, uh, EFF. That's the Electronic Frontier Foundation, for those that don't know. And they were talking about net neutrality, and they have taken sort of a middle of the road approach. Um, they are. Prob what the most popular libertarian website on the internet? I think. Or I don't the know second? if they're libertarian. That's uh, what not the, from what I heard from y'all's discussion uh, with Chris Camwell. I understand that you have a very narrow view of what somebody is as a libertarian, but uh, we did talk to, mm. uh, I think it was Kip or Kit uh, about it uh, regarding you know this the I, from the standpoint we, using the terms libertarian and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, and Kit uh, you know understood those things, echoed the the, the concerns, but his uh, but Sorry. Kit's uh, concern was that look we live in the real world and we have to have a real world policy and so i uh, like i like whatever the eff tends to put out there just mm -hmm. because it's them however i would err on the side of uh, you know no to government intervention but we're a long way from that right like the the internet is a government creation well rich paul what do you think net neutrality um i don't i don't have a strong technical opinion on it um the idea. Let's let me just slow down real quick before you go into that. Just for our listeners that don't know, net oh, neutrality yes. is the idea of the government forcing internet providers to sort of give an equal treatment to all data. So whatever data is coming across their connection, that they're not supposed to throttle anybody slower and they're not supposed to speed anybody else faster. So, for instance, if Netflix were to pay Time Warner for priority delivery of their packets, of their data, that would be illegal under net neutrality. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the idea for our listeners that weren't familiar. So what are your thoughts, Rich? Um, it sounds like another kind of antitrust um, legislation trying to outlaw speculative collusion. Is that a bad thing? That doesn't even happen. Uh, it sounds like a bad law to me. You know, if my ISP is is throttling 
um, websites that I want to see, then I'm going to change ISPs or demand that they stop. Well, the to I, what, the um, other one in town? Because there's only going to be two. Now, that was the other issue <laughs> that I was that I was going to say yep. is rather than adding a new layer of regulation, what I would like to see happen is the legally enforced monopolies that uh, cable companies have I would like to see those go away. Mm -hmm. if, if municipalities would allow it, there would be multiple cable companies the in at least urban areas. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say that here in Keene, New Hampshire, which doesn't really qualify as much of an urban area, we only have about 25,000 people here and about 10,000 mm -hmm. cable receiving homes or businesses. Um, the big claim here is that, oh, yeah, if uh, somebody else wanted to come in and set up a cable television system here, they'd it'd be fully legal for them to do so. There's not a prohibition on someone else coming in. It's just not enough of a profit margin, just, so yeah, they don't. It's just not worth coming in to do. Yeah, so, and in that case, it really, what, what you're saying is that having diversity isn't worth the cost of diversity, and, you know, that. So I have to say that I think that net neutrality is a bad idea simply because I don't think that the government's going to improve the internet and I'm, you know, I have a principled stance against having the government get involved in things in general. I think that the marketplace is restricted already, but we don't need the government to solve a problem that it created in the first place by having an overly restrictive marketplace in which, you know, you have to have these franchise agreements in most places, Greg, uh, to be able to do business. So the government's just going to end up making things worse as it always does with every government program. And if there's a risk that some company is going to pay for priority delivery of their packets, I really don't care about that. And if it does become an issue, then I agree with Rich Paul, I think the market will solve that problem through competition. People want good internet speeds, and if they're on a crappy provider, they're going to find another option. And, of course, cell phone companies are another option. So it's it's not mm -hmm. it's not fair to say there are only two options for internet in most even semi-urban places there are multiple uh providers you know if you include 4g on cell phone networks which in many cases 4g is faster than dsl greg your thoughts well sure i, I guess as you can imagine i have uh, my own perspective on this especially since i run an uh, internet startup and, uh you know i i have apps that have gone into the apple store so i am acutely aware of like the ability of organizations including Apple, Google, others, to exercise uh, monopoly, uh, right, you know, authority and extract rent from people and kick out apps they don't like and stuff like that. Um, to give that ability to large organizations, whether it's governments or governments of countries, or you know what, to me, the management team of Time Warner is equivalent to a government of a country yep. that, yes, they don't use force, but they're still a large organization that limits my choice. And they so do they, use force. They just focus that force through government. No, they do, right. They don't limit your choice. Your choice is limited by the state, not by Time Warner. Well, They're giving you another choice. They didn't have to put internet on their cable system, but they did. Because I wouldn't they call them the heroes here in that they're enjoying the monopoly privilege that the government gives out. So, you're, in short, you're saying you support net neutrality. Well, net neutrality is reclassifying it back to what it was before 2000. Either way, so you support it. Thanks for the call tonight, Greg. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If a libertarian thinks, and he's not a libertarian, but if one thinks that uh, the government's going to solve this problem they created, you haven't been paying attention to the government. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. 
I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll free. Bring up anything you want. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Breaking news in the Silk Road universe uh, just today, apparently. One of the other administrators of Silk Road 2.0 has been arrested. So the arrests continue to flow from the Silk Road websites. But of course, online on the black market, there are now more sites available than ever before. They're not calling themselves the Silk Road, although there still are a couple calling themselves the Silk Road. There's Agra Marketplace, there's Evolution, and there's probably another half a dozen others that I don't know their names, but Agra Marketplace and Evolution are the top two, uh, from my understanding, and they're doing all kinds of brisk business. There's thousands of drugs available for sale right now and on both of those marketplaces. And uh, the both marketplaces have the same dealers operating on both of the marketplaces. You can actually price compare against both marketplaces on the same dealer, you know, through the same dealers. It's an amazing thing, and it hasn't been stopped by this federal prosecution. These guys are doubling down. They're continuing on with more of these underground black markets. It's fascinating uh, to follow it. Well, I mean, it's not just Silk Road, uh, Silk Road, Silk Road 2.0, Silk Road 3.0, and then Silk Road... Was it Revolutions, what the hell are they calling themselves? Something like that. Revisited. Road, revi- yeah, whatever. Something. Reloaded. Reloaded. That's reloaded. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. go ahead with that, Rich. I had your mic turned off. One more time. Oh, uh, yeah, Reloaded, like the Matrix. Yes, <laughs> and, exactly. Uh, it, 
there are also there was Atlantis. Uh, there have been several they came and went. They didn't make it more than six marketplace months. or something. Sheep marketplace fleeced a lot of people. Right. Well, it doesn't. All those things doesn't. It doesn't Should have seen that one coming with the name. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just what matters is is that there are. This is an idea where there have been probably a dozen websites like this at this point. Maybe more than a dozen. I'd say at least. Yeah, yeah, so we're closer to fifteen, twenty. It's just keep it. It's going to keep on going until somebody creates it. I'm sure eBay wasn't the first online auction site. And it's not hard to find these things. I mean, you can go when you get onto Tor for the first time. Uh, it's not difficult to find a Tor wiki like the Hidden Wiki, as it's called. And when you go to the Hidden Wiki, they've got a list of all the underground drug marketplaces. And of course, there are people who are checking them often enough to where if one of them goes down, they'll indicate it's down, you know. And so it's not hard to find this stuff. So we're going to continue here with your calls and thoughts. We've got Joe. He's in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live, Joe. Hey. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about the net neutrality thing and. Um you had said something about uh, you know Netflix not being able to arrange uh, uh, peering agreements with um, the various internet service providers to give them you know faster access and everything, but that's that's not really what net neutrality is all about. It's more, uh, oh. I mean, there there's nothing in there that would prevent them from um, using their you know setting up a CDN network, you know, content delivery network, and and locating caching servers. At various peering points on the internet, um, what really is going on is the cable companies are throttling certain types of bandwidth, or purposely having really poor peering agreements with backbone providers. That's causing degradation of certain services. I mean, Netflix is definitely in favor of net neutrality. Um, you know, they've actually signed on to a bunch of you know, like the Battle for the Net and things like that, and movements like that, um, because because. Allow, allowing them to shape the bandwidth it w- significantly hurts Netflix. Netflix was basically uh, strong-armed into paying Verizon a ton of money um, to allow them to peer directly with them because Verizon has slowed their connection to the point where their service was unusable and they were they were faced with losing potentially millions of customers. So they had to, you know, Verizon essentially blackmailed them into. Um, paying a ton of money to speed up their connection. But um, I think... I'm sorry, who am I supposed to feel bad for here, Verizon or Netflix? You're supposed to feel bad for Netflix. Okay, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, why, you see, this why, is, why the difficulty be? here is is that... Isn't look, Netflix like 34% of all internet traffic now or something ridiculous yes, like it's, that? Yes, uh, it's a huge... The most popular see, service. I yeah. can't imagine that there wouldn't be Verizon customers who would say to themselves, oh, gee, Netflix really sucks over Verizon, so I'm going to go get a different provider. Yeah, I don't There right. is yes, a remedy there for that. There aren't any options. There aren't, people don't necessarily well, there, have them. Sure, there are options. The government has... I think that's the best argument, is, is that there are few options. And you shouldn't say there aren't any options, because you're using hyper- not... hyperbole with Ian, and you cannot I've use hyperbole with Ian. I've never had a problem with, with Netflix Ian. at all on any <laughs> connection. There are... Um, if you're lucky enough not to have uh, have issues with it, then that's that's great. Right. Well, just because uh, you haven't had problems, people, Ian, he has outlined something that has he, he is claiming mm-hmm. has occurred, and your answer to that is, yeah, and he's I'll running take to your mommy word government for it. to solve this well, problem. Well, no, I understand him. he's doing that, and I'm going to rebut that right now. Um, so, caller, the the it's fact Joe. is, Joe. We, uh, whenever you use the government as a shortcut, and it is easy to use the government as a shortcut, it's what we want to do. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's like the EPA coming out and saying your cars need to get 30 miles to the gallon on average or whatever it is that they're doing. You know, instead of letting the marketplace move in that direction on its own, uh, and the marketplace tends to be a little more uh, slow um, in achieving these things than, uh, than sort of throwing out some legislation and saying this is the way we're going to do it. That's kind of the uh, it's the cheap way out so i don't know how the marketplace would go about solving this problem but would you agree with me that yes it would solve this problem because people demand that they that they solve it um this way oh a- a- absolutely i mean i'm not i'm not even even in favor of the fcc making this ruling that they're going to make because they're likely going to to mess things up even worse than, than they've I mean, they essentially created this problem for sure um, so then you're not but, in favor I mean, but, of net neutrality Oh no! I'm no! I'm just I'm just telling you what what the current problem is. 
ah, it, uh, okay. the cable com- the cable companies are and and the telcos are are trying to kill the internet for sure. And people, you know, I understand their their concern. They want the FCC to do something because the internet is definitely it's being threatened, and it's not it's not designed not to be a neutral network. It, it was designed from the get go to be neutral and not to discriminate against bandwidth. And in a true free market, I mean, no one would want an uh, 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 an internet that isn't neutral. It just wouldn't happen. People wouldn't pay for that, and. Um, you know, these cable companies are definitely, certainly trying to kill the Internet. And um, That's a you know, silly thing to say. I mean, why would – to say the cable companies are trying to kill the Internet just doesn't make any sense. Like, well, this why is where they make the money. The only thing that they can do is kill the fastest means of access to the Internet, in which case – yeah, we have to go back to dial-up until somebody replaces what the cable companies were doing. Time Warner Cable but that's seems to be absolute worst case. They seem the to be more company, than happy to charge me two hundred and thirty dollars a month for a business class internet connection, and I imagine they will continue to be happy to do that even as they are subsumed by Comcast. The they are making tons of money selling content. They want to sell you their content. They want to say, you know, forget this Netflix thing. You're buying our, you know. $150 mm-hmm. um, television package, and we're going to sell you our on-demand package, and we're going to make our stuff super fast, and we're going to make Netflix okay. wicked You slow, remember a company called AOL? It. Yeah. I they think. tried that. That's been tried already. AOL tried to be the big content provider for itself, and what people said was, oh, yes, well, this AOL content is all very well and good, but I'm going to go get a real internet provider, and I'm going to go access the internet, because that's where and the that. cable companies learned from that, and they lobbied to get these monopolies. AOL didn't have a monopoly because anyone could set up a dialogue. They don't have a monopoly. What are you talking about? All right. What monopoly? Well, use the term cartel when you talk to cartel. Ian about this. <laughs> because... All right, a cartel. <laughs> no, no, seriously. They, 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 they definitely do. They own the last mile. You can't okay. just go start a uh, you know, competing uh, you know, fiber internet company out right. there. Actually, apparently you can here in right. New Hampshire, but it's the government who's doing it here and not uh, you know, average yeah. folks. That's what the and claim the is. bottom line is anybody can get a fat pipe into Keene, New Hampshire. So to pay for How it. they're going to distribute that throughout Keene, New Hampshire is their problem, but anybody can get a fat pipe here and distribute yeah. it somehow. Well, Joe, I'm Run glad Wi-Fi. to hear that. I'm glad to hear that despite your critiques, you don't support using the government to solve a problem that they created. So thanks for that. I appreciate your call tonight. Sorry for jumping to a conclusion earlier. Thank you. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here. And you can share your thoughts with us, whether it's net neutrality, Ross Ulbricht's case, or whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live at 855-450-FREE. We're coming up. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Recognizing that the Constitution could have flaws or need changing, our founders created a procedure for amending it. While it's difficult, amendments must pass by two-thirds of both houses of Congress and then three-quarters of the states, the Constitution has been amended 27 times. Some have argued it's too hard to amend and that courts should instead reinterpret its provisions. But the framers wanted it to be hard. They wanted to prevent hasty and unwise changes and hoped Americans would respect the stability the Constitution creates. Allowing courts to reinterpret the Constitution to match political impulses would allow an elite group of judges to alter our supreme law without public discussion. Our founders created the amendment system to ensure that constitutional changes would be the product of careful and public deliberation. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. By now, you've heard the news stories about police shootings turned into racially charged protests and police officers being executed in retaliation. These developments are frightening to say the least. The scary part is that now police officers feel like they have to form committees and hold public hearings just to get approval to respond to a violent crime in progress. They have to hesitate now and worry about being attacked by the media and the public just for doing their jobs. The point is you need to be able to defend yourself, your home, business, family. Your survival depends on you now more than ever. Look, the police are being hamstrung. Anti-American forces are working to register and eventually confiscate our guns. Politics are threatening our Second Amendment and our freedom. Fight back. Get a ghost AR-15 at guns80.com. Go to 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. Look, there are no papers, no dealers, and no registration. 
Get your Ghost AR-15 rifle now. Go to guns80.com. That's guns80.com. Or call 844-2-GUNS-80 today. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because. And avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. In the studio tonight, it's me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. More about the Silk Road, Ross Ulbricht, uh, the latest from the trial and the surrounding goings-on. We will tell you more about that on the way here. But first, your calls and thoughts about what's on your mind. We go to Colin in Baltimore. Colin, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich, and Mark. Yo, hey, so Rich Paul, um, I wanted to tell you that you were really funny on that Boston Strong video that you uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is a neighbor of ours here at uh, in Keene that has been sort of a, a bit of a pain in a lot of ways. He's a member of Stop Free Keen and is sort of <laughs> notorious for uh, laying on his horn as he drives by the, the studio. Imagine and, a neighbor that when you whenever he drives by, he honks his horn as, like repeatedly or lays on it or whatever he does. He and, did it tonight, actually. Yeah, he's, it's a, first he's a real joy to be with. Um, but Rich, you actually went down and confronted him at one point, and that's the video I think that, Colin, you're referring to. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I called about this a couple of weeks ago but it, when when Rich Paul wasn't here, but now that he is here, I wanted to tell him that personally. So. Oh, very good. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, that was that was kind of fun. Yeah, I'd like to see Rich. I mean, not necessarily having to do with Boston, but I'd love to see Rich do some more. Uh, I don't know, man in the man on the street interviews, or just you know, get in front of a camera uh, more mm -hmm. often. I think yeah, I think that'd be fun because you're you're a great I, personality. Yeah, I yeah, need to find I'd a producer. Get him free talk live more, actually. But, well, um, we're actually hoping to have Rich on on Tuesday nights, as a matter of fact. On oh, Free Talk right on. I, I, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I think I think he did did pretty good tonight, actually. Johnny Ray, um, by the way, for those who are wondering, because the obvious question is, well, what about Johnny Ray? Uh, Johnny Ray is directing his first play. He does community theater here in the the Keene area, and it's his first time directing, and that's a time consuming activity. You know, dealing with stage productions and creating the you know the stage set and training the actors and going through rehearsals and all of that costuming you know the directors involved in all of that so uh, so he's uh, taking an indefinite period of time off from free talk live and uh, rich paul will be joining us 
So. The roar of the grease paint and the yeah. smell of the crowd. I love showbiz. So, Colin, <laughs> what else uh, did you have on your mind tonight? Yeah, well, I, I called about this the other night, too. It was about that, that Garrett Eve video when, when this, that really super hard left liberal girl was talking about Ian and how he was related to something about Hitler's master plan, even though I'm pretty sure it was, it's actually called Hitler's final solution. In fact, I'm, I'm about 100% sure. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? And, uh, no, and, I'm going to need a little uh, updating here. So um, whose master plan? What, where is this master plan? I need to see the master plan, for God's sake. Uh, so just to give you a briefing here, Mark, Garrett Ian, local activist known for his hair and yes, for, uh, for his Robin Hooding, which is, of course, going around saving people from getting parking tickets. He's got a giant blonde afro. And uh, anyway, he was out on Central Square, which is kind of where most of you know the visible public displays of activism tend to happen in Keene. He was out there, and these group, this group of people called uh, – actually, Garrett was doing a barbecue open to the public that day, and a group of people calling themselves Stop Free Keen showed up for the very first time in public. They had been talking online for a number of months prior to this. They showed up in public with signs, and Garrett asked them a bunch of questions on video – one of which was in reference to Hitler's master plan. And I don't remember the exact phrasing of, of his question. Garrett asked him a question about Hitler's plan? Garrett asked a the, group of people. It yeah. was like about 20 people that had come out, a fairly large showing. I was actually pretty impressed uh, with the numbers that they had. And they were giving everyone the silent treatment, so they weren't responding in any way. They're just so, holding signs? Right. There's a video yeah. that's probably about 20 minutes long of Garrett just basically you know, going at them, just essentially talking at them, trying to engage them, trying to get someone to respond to him. And one of his questions or the statements that he made was in reference to Hitler's master plan. One oh, dear, of, the argument ad Hitlerium. <laughs> one of the that's a fallacy. Laid, uh, one of the females in the Stop Free Keen group took that video and made her own video, and that's what you're referring to, right, Colin? Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so, yeah. yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's what I, I wanted your opinions on it. And, and the funny thing is, I thought it was a weird way to attack you guys because I don't, I don't know where Hitler came into that, but I do know I have seen that girl in other videos, and the way she tends to insult people is just by calling them racist. Like, that's just her general insult for everyone, mm. you know? Well, it's and an I, easy way to shut down argument, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, at, at that point, you're, what, everything you say, you're a racist. What's the big deal, right? Well, I, I know Garrett Ian is not a racist. If he were, I wouldn't want to associate with him. Um, so it, that's nonsense. And the folks in Stop Free Keen generally don't have any intellectual arguments. They have nothing at all. Rich Paul, you actually invited them through an intermediary. Uh, mm -hmm. You went to a local church pastor here in town at the the church at the head of Central Square, like the church in Keene, the mm -hmm. most visible one in Keene. And you asked this guy to reach out to the folks in Stop Free Keene, this local opposition group, because you wanted to have a discussion or a debate with someone who was willing to do mm -hmm. that. What happened with that? Yeah, well, basically, uh, I wanted to mediate as an alternative to JP going to court. Um, I really hate the idea of using the state court system. Um, I don't, and, uh, I, so I put an offer out there to, uh, to mediate with, uh, any representatives of stop free Keen who had, you know, an, an issue and the, abil uh, the ability to articulate it. And apparently either they have no issues Issue or, or they lack the ability to articulate I'll what take the they latter. are. Yep. From, uh, um, this is the reason they do a silent protest at uh, Garrett Ian's barbecue right. is, is because, look, everybody keep your mouth shut because you're all stupid. You know, like that's, <laughs> that's what the coaching call was before all this. Colin, thanks for the call tonight, man. Uh, appreciate hearing from you. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. And by the way... Stop Free Keen, the group on Facebook. It's got three exclamations all written in capital letters. If you go there, they have 1,400 people in the group, but there's suspicion that the bulk of those people were actually added without their consent to the group and either don't know they've been added or don't log into Facebook often enough to, you know, care or whatever. Uh, because you'd think out of 1,400, 
1,500 people, one of them would be willing to have a, you know, moderated conversation with an intermediary and, you know, mm -hmm. have this discussion. But no, not a single one. Now, of course, we don't believe there's that many of them that are active. There's probably maybe one to 200 that, you know, will come in there on their own volition. And of those, maybe a few dozen would be likely to actually post something or, or you know, click like on something. And then of those few dozen, only a couple dozen would actually be willing to come out in public and do something at all. And one of the ways you can get a real indicator, I think, for the actual popularity of Stop Free Keen is to look at indicators like Twitter, where you can't just add people. You know, you can't do that with Twitter. You can't just go around and click add, 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 add. You can't do that. They they have to add you. Your followers have to make an effort to add you. Now, it's certainly true that you can buy fake ads likes and things like that from India or whatever, but obviously they haven't done that with their Twitter account because it only has like 50 likes or 50 followers. So I think that's a probably a better indicator. It may be a little on the low side because not everybody uses Twitter, but 50 compared to 1400 the the truth is probably somewhere in between i you know with the amount of likes they have on social media is sort of irrelevant to me what i what really bothers sure. me about these people is is that they're dangerous lunatics um they <laughs> threaten violence on a regular basis they have really no attachment to critical thinking they do not want to engage in uh debate uh, they have no intention of doing that they're constantly talking about violent solutions to problems oh yeah there have been There's no shortage of screen shots about them there have been violence. all kinds of there's been all kinds of vandalism here at the studio mm -hmm. uh, and i have a i believe that this is sort of perpetuated by uh you know the 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 hate that these people are putting out there uh, they make it they, they normalize the the hate towards uh people that want to see their community better that's all free keen is now you know, like their activism or dislike their activism, that's a different story. But engaging on the the fashion that they do, well, they I think find we're them trying very to destroy dangerous. the community. Well, they think that we're a threat to the community, that we're you know a terrible group of people, and that we're all scumbags. Is and... that an explanation for the violence? What I'm saying is that they're really lucky that this isn't the open carry um, arm of uh, the Free State Project because mm -hmm. they're likely to be dead. See, I don't know about dead because you know apart from the one time at the fountain there there has been very little actual violence yeah, i agree well, but, but the, there have been a couple smart. of pushing the matches in the, in the street i mean if i if i had had a chance i would have uh shot the guy who pushed uh, Yankee in the fountain, but I would have had to know what he was going to do in advance That's for true. that to happen, and it was crowd And that guy wasn't, as I understand it, a member of Stop Freak. But the vandalism that goes on mm. here, if it's an egg, it could easily is easily be a 2-2-3 round. Uh, but it hasn't. But it's not, not yet. All right, so there's more coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,280, silver at $17.80, and Bitcoin is trading around $210. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? Could you feed them for even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, four years before the White House blamed North Korea for a cyber attack on Sony, the U.S. government was reportedly hacking the country's computer system. In 2010, the National Security Agency began the operation, according to the New York Times, in a report published Sunday, which cites newly disclosed NSA documents. The NSA was able to infiltrate many of the computers and networks used by North Korean hackers and provided evidence that Kim Jong-un's computer wizards were behind the hack of Sony's email system. Sources told the Times. The evidence gathered by the software hidden to monitor North Korea's activities proved critical in persuading President Obama to accuse the government of Kim Jong-un of ordering the Sony attack. The controversial transatlantic trade and investment partnership has faced resistance from critics who say the deal would allow multinational corporations to override national laws that protect the environment, consumer rights, and food standards. The so-called investor-to-state dispute settlement has been suspended after 150,000 objections in a European Union consultation exercise. The ISDS would protect foreign investors from decisions by national governments. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, another international trade deal, has also faced heavy scrutiny from the public. The Justice Department will not consider proposals to spare the life of Shokar Zarnaf, one of the alleged bombers of the Boston Marathon. That's according to a report from the Associated Press. The trial to decide what punishment Zarnaf should face will begin in late January. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On January 12th, Swiss authorities seized an automated bot called the Random Darknet Shopper which was programmed to buy products from the Agora Marketplace on the deep web. The bot was part of an art exhibit in Switzerland, exploring the implications of robots breaking the law by purchasing from the deep web. The Darknet shopper spent $100 in bitcoins per week, purchasing counterfeit jeans, ecstasy pills, Nike sneakers, cigarettes, and the entire Lord of the Rings series of novels. Agora and other sites on the deep web can only be accessed by special browsers such as Tor. During his State of the Union speech on Tuesday, President Obama will announce a plan to close tax loopholes. The White House says Obama will call for an end to certain loopholes on trust funds, increases in the top tax rates on dividends and capital gains, and impose new fees on financial firms that borrow heavily. Other changes include requiring businesses to automatically enroll employees into individual retirement accounts. The White House proposal would also include tax breaks for families with two working members, child care, and paying college tuition. 
The Liberty Beat is made possible with the help of Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19th, 2015. Make sure you check out our website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. America is at a crossroads on many issues, leading many to ask, is it time for the president to blow the silver horn left behind by the founding fathers in case the country ever needed them? Of course, the horn, which has been sitting in the Oval Office since 1817, has never been used by a commander in chief, but many Americans think now might be the time to summon our forefathers. Which founding fathers would come back? All of them. Uh, look, look, when you have a bug problem, you call the exterminator. When you have an America problem, you call the founding fathers. Uh, they know what to do. We Look, have to keep in mind the Founding Fathers left us with a warning. If you blow the horn with less than pure intentions, it will turn to tin and can never be used. But a president has to take risks, have the courage to admit that his administration is not all-knowing, and, and, and blow that magic silver horn to summon someone who is. Yes, but what if we become too reliant on them and they disappear after the next new moon, as was written? Yeah. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. More on the Silk Road trial of Ross Ulbricht. The federal government, of course, accusing him of running the Silk Road, the infamous underground drug marketplace. We'll continue with some of the latest on that. Uh, the trial resumed today, kicking off its second week. Uh, so, But also, your calls come first here. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. Let's go to Abel in New Hampshire. Abel, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, thank you very much, guys. Hey Good there. to speak with you. And... Uh, I'm uh, going back to a little lighter note here. The, uh, the to me, uh, two of the uh, greatest uh, internet trolls that we have calling in on uh, Free Talk Live are James in Arizona and David in uh, uh, Dave in uh, in Poughkeepsie. New York. And, uh, Poughkeepsie. There you go. And uh, I'm just curious what people think. You know, who's the most annoying? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I, you know, we we love to uh, to be annoyed by them now and again, just for their uh, audacity, I guess is uh, one way to put it. And uh, and uh, you know, you guys are, you know, you could shut them down and not have them on, but that wouldn't be free talk live, would it? Yep, that's certainly true. Well, that's an interesting question, and maybe it would be. It's a been posited that they might be the same uh, person like Who's a comedian that like one? a comedian acting as both of these people no that's unbelievable because they actually were on the phone with one another at one well, time well we did that uh, part partly to disprove that notion <laughs> oh i don't recall doing it for that reason i just did it cuz it'd be fun <laughs> Hey, thanks, uh, Abel, for the call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. You're Maybe welcome. we'll ask that question. Oh, wait, you can't do that anymore on uh, Facebook. I was going to say they they used to have questions, and thanks again for the call, uh, They on Facebook, and they still do on, like, the Facebook group, but if you have a page, you can no longer ask a question. We used to be able to ask a question and then provide, like, polling choices. Yeah. So we could have written up the question. Who's hey, more annoying? Who's more annoying? James in New York or, uh, you know, James Witt or James in New York. David in New York or James Witt. And then you could have added an option, too. Like, if you didn't agree with those two choices, you can add a third option. They don't have that anymore on Facebook pages. What a lame thing for them to do. Well, I can tell you, I, it would be my guess is that, uh, you know, the majority of the people on our Facebook page don't even listen to the show. You know, they're, yeah, that's probably they're, true. they're interacting on Facebook. They added us because they saw a meme Something they, they liked. liked. Um, oftentimes, I can see in the thread that many times people have no clue that they're even posting on the the site of a, a talk show. Um, they, they just don't know. So I guess what we'll have to do is we'll ask the question, who is more annoying, 
uh, on our Facebook group, which is only for Free Talk Live amplifiers. And you can become a Free Talk Live amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. You can use any major credit card via PayPal or uh, you can use Visa or MasterCard right there on the amp.freetalklive.com. So just go and get signed up. And if you want to do more than five bucks a month, we sure do appreciate that too. But five is all we're asking. That's money that we use to invest in Free Talk Live to get our show on more radio stations around the country. Over 155 stations right now. We can get on more than that. It just takes money to advertise, market, and promote. And you can get perks like access to that Free Talk Live uh, Facebook group, that Amp Only Facebook group. There's also the Amp Only podcast and forum and more. Go get all the details. And then please sign up at amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go to, uh, we've got Michael W. Dean. He's calling us from the underground bunker in Wyoming. At least that's what I presume you're doing. Michael, good evening. Yeah, yeah, I'm calling from the underground bunker. I'm uh, calling about uh, David Crowley, the guy that was found dead with his wife and child next to him this past Saturday near Minneapolis. Uh, Yeah, we talked about this briefly toward the end of the show with Derek J. last night. Uh, You actually did an interview with this guy. Yeah, and if you can, I'm really, like, I'm reluctant to even talk about this, and I'm not, like, pimping the fiends, you know, like, oh, go check this out, but... Uh, go check out the, the episode. <laughs> re- I'm we lose we the stuff that would be link bait for other people. We lose listeners over, and I get death threats over. So I'm not, you know, I was reluctant to even do this topic, but um, I replayed last night on the Fiends show. It's the top thing on the Fiends right now. The the interview I did with him two years ago, and the reason I want people to listen to it is because I've heard a lot of people, even Liberty people, being like, "Oh, he did it," you know, like Derek J. Pretty much was like, oh, he did it. I don't see any other possibility. And I am not. Did a he say that? Guy. I don't recall him saying that uh, on Facebook, not okay. in the show, you know, or or like, you know, almost certain, like, you know, just well, basically writing it off. My position is it's completely plausible based on what little I know about the guy. And that is that he created this trailer for a movie called Gray State, which uh, apparently was never released, the the move, the full-length movie, but the trailer was released a couple of years ago, and it was around that time when you interviewed the guy. Um, and my response was essentially that it seemed like fetishizing violence against the state and that it wasn't, you know, my cup of tea, but I can certainly understand why a lot of libertarian types would enjoy that. It might have been my cup of tea probably 10 years ago, but I'm not that that same person. Yeah, I know. Who, you're you're a preparing- recovering... You're a recovering bayonet polisher. Yeah, right. I was a it's gun It's kind of like people that, quit, people that quit smoking hate being around smoke. They're like smoke Nazis. You're kind of like that about uh, prepper stuff and gun stuff. Well, I don't stuff. mind people having, you know, prepared for... I've got some canned food in the basement I know, and some toilet paper. I know, paper, but, you're, you know but, but any any talk of like, oh, they're going to take us and off to the camps, you know... You, yeah, it say, seems paranoid. It seems paranoid to me, and the, you know, the the trailer came off to me as like, oh God, this is this guy's fantasy of violence against the state, and it's not something I wanted to be associated with. But now you've got the guy's body and his wife and his daughter all dead in their home, and the allegation is is that he killed them and then killed himself. Um, you know, did he snap? Did he have a mental break? And during that mental break, he had all these weapons around because he's one of those, you know, gun polisher guys. Okay, first, first of all, seems like, plausible. That's y- all. Y- you, you, and some other people, including Derek J. And Derek J.'s kind of backed down on this. I've talked about about with him about it since yesterday. But you guys are completely misjudging this guy, like book by its cover. I talked to him for, you know, did like a forty-five minute interview and did like a. Yeah, I heard a good portion of it. You were playing it on your show last night, and uh, yeah, I heard it too. That was playing back before Free Talk Live on LRN.FM. So I did, did hear we, a couple of segments. We did a, I did a, like a forty-minute pregame with him too, and really kind of like, I liked him and really kind of bonded with him more than with most people that I interview. You know, I won't claim to know him. Mm -hmm. But I'll say, like, I was rooting for that guy, and he was a brilliant artist. The whole interview we did was 95% talking about the craft of filmmaking. It's the only interview with him like that. You know, every other interview was like, so when is the new world order going to take away our right? You know, like, like this was artist to artist kind of thing. And the guy was brilliant. I had a lot of respect for his technical ability and his vision. But that doesn't mean he couldn't have had a mental break and then shot his his, uh, family. It it doesn't, but, you know, there was no indication— that he was anything like that. People can change, but um, you really are, and other people are judging a book by its cover. The guy was a filmmaker. Like, do you, you know, do you, uh, 
Do you say Tom Cruise is a murderous lunatic because he plays one in a movie? This guy, when he started making the movie, he was like not into this stuff at all. And he was like, you know, though, this is a good topic material. And when, when he got to the trailer point, he kind of believed some of it, but he wasn't like bayonet polisher nutty. And he actually was talking at the end of the interview about people that were threatening him for having made the movie. You know, I think there's three possibilities. He snapped and did it um, or a government agency did it. Or the third possibility I'm not hearing much about is, you know, some private citizen who didn't like his take on their vision of, you know, the end of the world. I mean, he was getting people like saying he was a COINTELPRO agent, calling him a, you know, Zionist plant, all sorts of stuff. He was attracting a lot of weirdness out of the woodwork. And I, I really think that any, this story it, has struck me as bizarre from the beginning. And it's I very don't, bizarre. I don't know why it, it set off my my spider sense, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy by any uh, by any stretch. But for some reason, this this story just struck me as strange. Well, police... Do you happen to know if it's true that he had just re- uh, just raised like three million that, in venture the capital? Only sor- the only source for that is uh, Jordan Page says that David Crowley told him that, and. You know, I I like Jordan Page, what I know about him. I'm not saying he would make it up. I'm also, you know, maybe David Crowley was depressed and, like, said that. Who knows? So he could have been lying or it could have been a deal that that fell through, but it's certainly interesting. Well, just it's interesting, uh, Michael, that you said that he wasn't into any of this before he kind of came onto this topic as an assignment, essentially. Oh, this would make an interesting production and then sort of fell down the rabbit hole. And that rabbit hole can lead to some very dangerous, depressing places. Let's talk more about that coming up here in moments with Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. This is Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in New Hampshire people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. If I were a parent, and I am not, Mark, you are, I am not, uh, but if I were a parent, then I would be teaching my kids the difference between right and wrong based on whether or not people get hurt, not whether or not some elected official has written some words down on a piece of paper and deemed something to be illegal. There have been so many things over the history of time that have been labeled right. as illegal. It's legal. It was legal to shoot engines in this country. Did that make it right? Legal and illegal, right and wrong, these things do not correspond no. here in America. It, they rarely correspond, as a, as a matter of fact. Anywhere. Yeah. Now, there are some things that are illegal that are absolutely wrong, sure. like murder or arson or destruction of property or However, stealing. it's also illegal to not pay taxes to the federal government. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. It That's is heroic. It is right to keep the money that you earn. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on in. Username's lrn.fm. That's where Michael Dean is. He's one of the freedom fiends, the founding freedom fiend, I guess uh, one could say. And uh, we'll get back to that discussion here in a moment about this uh, filmmaker who was found dead along with his family. Apparently they'd been there for a while, at least a few weeks. We'll uh, talk a little bit more about that situation. But first, Mark. You can join more than a million people, millions of people actually, who have uh, trusted LegalZoom.com for their common legal documents. There you can incorporate a business or create a will or a living trust and even register a trademark. They're empowering you and protecting you with common legal documents people trust. It's LegalZoom.com. You can use coupon code FTL to save $10 on your order at LegalZoom.com. All right, let's go back to uh, Michael Dean from Freedom Fiends at FreedomFiends.com. Also, the developer of Fiend Phone, which we should be talking over tonight, Michael Dean. We shouldn't be using uh, this Skype connection, although it is still a little more convenient to use than Fiend Phone. But Fiend Phone's uh, coming along. I'm ready when you are with the Fiend phone, man. All right, Absolutely. Well, that's cool. So, yeah, we'll talk more about that uh, in the future. But you'd called in to discuss this uh, situation. What's the guy's name, the filmmaker? David Crowley. David and, Crowley. Okay, so yeah. he's making this movie or was making this movie called Gray State. It wasn't really up my alley, but, you know, some people would probably enjoy the trailer that uh, that was released. And Is then, Red Dawn up your alley? That was pretty entertaining, I have to say, as a it's, Hollywood it, film. It basically, it basically was Red Dawn, except instead of the Soviets, the enemy is the federal government. And yeah. uh, a lot of people misjudged I love Red it. Dawn. They, you know, they people said, "Oh, it fetishized violence." He actually says in this interview two years ago, people say I fetishize violence, and he used that yeah. phrase. And and I don't fetishize violence. The guy was barely even a gun guy. Like Derek Derek J is more of a gun guy than this guy was. He was in the army and he knew guns and a lot, you know, the scary picture of him with the mask on, that's props, you know, for the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, he I just think he's being mispainted a lot. You know, people are just dismissing it like, oh, this is what fetishizing violence gets you. You know, you kind of said something like that. And Derek yep. J took it even further. Like, oh, I think I'm pretty sure he did it. And well, well, boy, so what you're saying is, well, what you were saying before was that when you were talking with him two years ago, he was new to the whole liberty scene, that he had uh, decided to do this movie and then sort of went down a, a rabbit hole. And I remember at one point during the interview, and maybe I misheard it, I didn't write it down, uh, but he said something like, the movie is darker now than it has been. And that says to me that he was progressing down a road of, uh, you know, that the sort of despair. That says to me that he was progressing to audience uh, reaction to the trailer. Okay, um, so that's fine. I would like to, however, back up for a second. Um, in applying Occam's razor, when you find a house full of uh, dead people, um, the, the number one thing you should think of is the father of the house took his guns and shot everybody. Because statistically, that's, that's the most happens. likely thing to happen. The next step is to... 
say the mother of the house took the guns and shot everybody or the child and and then you can go to home invasions yeah. and then you can go to uh you know maybe a, a friend or somebody who owed was money like there's a few things you know the or I'd, someone who hated his trailer i'd say that's even more plausible government agents sneaking in in the too. middle of the night and doing it is probably a bit down the list so i'm going to defend anybody who said you know that hey i'm going to start with choice number one until there's some evidence to move me down to choice I, x i don't i don't defend that and that's what i'm concerned about is people immediately saying they know the answer and the answer with everybody seems to be either the government did it of course the government did it which actually nobody can say that with absolute sure that it was a false flag unless they were there carrying out the false flag so sure people shouldn't say that of course and then other people like derek J was saying yesterday like yeah i'm pretty sure that you know it looks like uh, what else could it be i don't see any other evidence well, we haven't you, seen well, any evidence. Until you evidence. see any Here's other evidence, that's what you that's, should assume it is. No, well, no, no I mean, I don't absence assume anything. Of evidence is not evidence of absence. Well, obviously, you know, all, three of you, all three of you people in that room and Derek J., I have heard horrible things about on the internet. Sure. That if, if, I, if I'd never heard anything else about anybody, I'd assume were true. If I never right. knew Derek J., if I never knew Derek J., and I saw his trailer and I'd never heard anything about it, I'd think he was, like, sexually attracted to police or something, man. You can't judge someone by their art. And I love that movie. I mean, I promoted that movie and helped it get distribution. But, yeah. you know, you can't judge somebody on one thing. I talked to the guy. I feel like we got in each other's heads, and I felt like I came away from it better. I really – he was a very human person, a great artist. All I'm saying is the game that people play when someone dies violently of, oh, it's this or that. It's gossip mongering. And you're really ruining someone's reputation for life, I think, when you're someone with a big audience and you can influence people and you're saying, oh, I, I'm sure it's got to be that. Or like, well, I didn't say that. I'd like, to I'd like to point out that I said that I think it's plausible uh, what might have happened with him alleged. And I said allegedly killing uh, his you know, wife and kid and then killing himself. All I said was it's plausible. I have no evidence whatsoever. I have not been to the scene of the crime. I have not seen anything that has been presented. All I've heard have been some headlines and some stories about you know what allegedly might have possibly occurred. Uh, but I don't think any of us has seen any evidence. Well, and you did. You did. You posted a thing that said like, yo, guy fetishizes violence, ends up dead. Like, fill in the blanks like it it seems like you're implying and a lot of people thought you were implying like oh this is what happens when you fetishize violence the other thing that like is, isn't that widely known is the police um said that the back door was uh the sliding back door was ajar you know that's i mean that could be it's something you left by accident but I, what I, you guys are missing the point kind of i'm i'm not the point isn't he killed his family for sure, or he didn't for sure, or the government did it for sure, or they didn't for sure, or someone who didn't like it. That's not the point. The point is you're messing with somebody's like absolute legacy for perpetuity when they're not around to defend it. When people say, Oh, I know what happened. And I don't like seeing that happen. And, and at some point, one of you guys in this, in, in the room is probably going to have some, something painted on you that didn't happen. And I'm not going to jump. Sure, to it's happened it. already. Oh you know? yeah, me yeah, too. It's happened already. My yeah. my headline uh, was: filmmaker fetishizes violence against the state, comma allegedly murders wife, comma child. And that doesn't mean that I've taken a position on anything. That's just well, fetishizing know. is a loaded term. Well, that's my opinion. It that's is. my opinion about uh, what that trailer was, and I'm not going to change well, that opinion. I also think that you are wrong, and about that he fetishized violence okay. because. He, he directly addressed that, and, you know, he was making art. Well, just because I mean, he you, said something doesn't mean that it wasn't fetishizing violence. I uh, think people What does that even this. mean? Can you define well, for me what fetishizing violence means? Like getting means? off, like getting off almost on the fantasy of killing federal agents and they, turning the it into yeah. artwork. I mean, well, the, here's an example. V for Vendetta. Every time they blow up... Uh, the the parliament building at mm -hmm. the end of that of that uh film i have tears running down my sure. face is that fetishizing violence 
Um, no, not necessarily, because the Parliament building is empty at the end of that particular movie. So technically, well, no one you, innocent you know, died well, there. Here's the, what, what, wait, one more important thing is, is where's the money? This guy raised like $60,000 for Two a years film. ago. I want to know where this Two movie is. You called him a filmmaker. Well, the other a thing is, make a film. I've seen he, a story, and I don't know if it's it. true, that says he just got $3 million in financing to finish his well, film. Also, and that doesn't sound like a Facebook. prelude to suicide to me. Post, he also posted on Facebook that he was almost done with it. Well, then it should be easily releasable, unless somebody trashed his files while they were in the house as well. Michael, thanks for the call tonight. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. You make up your own mind. I'll post the trailer on our Facebook. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five. $500,000 $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. (laughs) 
This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. We started talking about the Ross Ulbricht trial. There's, of course, more to say about that. If we get the chance, we will. Uh, But now the conversation has gone in different directions. You, of course, can call in and bring up anything you'd like. Michael Dean called in a moment ago from the Freedom Fiends to talk about this gray state. It's a movie that we were asking a question about whether or not it was going to be released. Well, Derek J. actually just came downstairs uh, here at the LRN.FM studio to inform us someone has released the rough cut of this film online as of tonight. So what is... Close to, you know, finished product, yeah. semi-finished product is apparently now available. That changes available. my opinion a bit. Like, it moves it in a direction. Well, because the question mm-hmm. was he'd gotten all this money, the $60,000, maybe $3 million, <laughs> according to some reports, uh, to ostensibly finish this movie. And, uh, and the claim was that he was close to being finished, and now that apparently has been proven in that someone has released the a rough cut. The rough Which cut militates the against um, a despair situation. I mean, one of the things I could imagine leading to spare would be uh, raising a bunch of money and then not being able to produce a product. Yeah, but that well, even sounds if you were in, like he was pretty close. Well, right, but uh, but if you were despair in a situation of despair, that wouldn't necessarily lead you to the conclusion of killing your family. I mean, that's a total mental break if uh, if that's what indeed happened. And the allegations yeah. are that this man who I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name again, but the uh, the filmmaker of Gray State. That he had uh, allegedly killed his daughter, five-year-old daughter, and his wife, and then killed himself. No one had found the bodies in their own home for a number of weeks. And uh, so there's the allegations. And, you know, what I had said previously was that I thought this trailer for Gray State was fetishizing violence against the state. And, Rich, right before we went back on the air, you said there's nothing wrong with making a movie about that, right? No, of course not. I mean, V for Vendetta was a fine film, and I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. But, you know, it was obviously fiction. David Crowley. David Crowley. That was obviously fiction. This is clearly fiction as well, but it's based on a belief system that a certain number of people, uh, they hold to. And uh, mm-hmm. if you watch the trailer, and I don't think you saw the whole it thing. It sounds here. like very Alex Jonesy when you start talking about FEMA camps. Yeah, which it is, opens up with FEMA. It's not my brand of. Uh, it right. opens up with Thank RFID, you. like people are getting forced chipped, which is again a very Alex Jones kind of conspiracy movement uh, thing. Not to say it's not happening. You know, there are some people. They're out tracking there that, you through your cell phones, yeah, people. They don't know? need the chips, right? They don't need the chips because you're automatically you're carrying it you're, around. You're voluntarily carrying the tracking chip with you. Um, but so it starts out with that kind of those trappings, right? Like FEMA, which is the mm. they're they're actually they have military looking guys, but they have the FEMA logo on their their chest. Yeah, and that uh, seems mm-hmm. odd to me. Yeah, like I it, what it made me feel like is this is aimed at a particular audience. Sure, to the some extent, demo. I want to distance myself from that audience, and it gave me that feeling. Right, and then it then it moves on into like the government abducting people and killing people, and then there are some scenes that appear to be, and again, it's just a trailer, so it's hard to, you know, when you see things happening in a trailer, you can't really extrapolate what the actual movie is going to be like, but mm-hmm. it appears as though that in the trailer, we just watched this uh, just a moment ago here during the, during the break, so we freshened up on it. Uh, but it, it appears that in certain scenes of the trailer that there are what appear to be militia members fighting with federal agents in the streets of whatever anonymous city this you know movie is taking I place in. Yeah, but I, but I believe it was Minneapolis or St. Paul or something like that. But did it appear that way to you? I mean, you had yeah, these guys yeah. who, who didn't have FEMA written across their chest. They looked like they were the heroes of the film. And there was definitely, you know, some gunplay going on and some people getting shot and killed. Good, and it just, good old-fashioned, God-fearing Americans shooting big, bad government stormtroopers. That's that's the feeling that I got from this trailer. It's like, okay, this is this filmmaker's vision of what could happen, and this is, you know, maybe what he wants to see people do, and that is use violence uh, against state violence. And that, Well, at some point, I would want to see people resist. I mean, speculative fiction asks the question, what if? And obviously, Britain's government is not the government uh, that's portrayed in V for Vendetta. Mm-hmm. 
But if it were, I would certainly approve of overthrowing it by any means necessary, including blowing up buildings that did contain people. Yeah, see, I, I won't mean, say that. I don't. Uh, I don't support violence as a solution. I don't think that that's the right thing to do. I think that you're only going to be, be get more violence when you use violence. It's one thing well, to take the position point, that you should use defensive force against someone who's attacking you and your family directly. That's what was happening in this yeah. film, though. I mean, these are government agents dragging people off, putting black bags over their heads, Ian. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the government's coming and putting a black bag over your head, 10 seconds before that was when you were supposed uh. to start shooting. Yeah, right? when that when that happens to your neighbor, you have a right to defend them. You have a right even to go back to the source of that violence, yeah. you know, just like... Uh, the bombing of leaving all conspiracy theories aside, the bombing of Pearl Harbor would justify a strike against Japanese military power to prevent it from happening again. Uh, there comes a time when the state is dragging away so many people that you kind of have to fight it. I've I've been known to say that the only reason I don't advocate the the revolution is because I don't think we would win. And there, I mean, sometimes you have to fight back. Yeah, I mean, I understand the argument, but I don't promote that particular viewpoint. I don't, uh, I don't it doesn't make me feel comfortable. Uh, I don't well, like the yeah, idea. I think this well, it shouldn't make you feel comfortable. Yeah. It It is good that that war is so horrible. Uh, and I wouldn't make a movie. I misquote. And I, and I wouldn't participate in making a movie that sort of puts those ideas on screen and maybe not overtly says do this, but ultimately, you know, puts that message out there that, that this is going to come to violence and that this is what needs to happen. And, and this is this is what the person I used to be. I mean, I used to be the person who expected it to come to violence. I had body armor. I still do. Um, and, you know, machine guns and that kind of or, you know, uh, semi-automatic uh, rifles. But, you know, I had guns and I had armor and I was preparing for the end. And that's, you know, I don't believe that that that's going to be a fruitful solution to the problem of violence in our time. And yeah, I've but come to peace. Another thing that you have to look at not determine here. who is right. War determines who is left. Uh, you know, you have to survive in order to put your fruitful solution into practice. Yeah, well, Just I, because no one has made the movie that you want to see doesn't make this a bad movie. Um, now, what I have oh, said I've seen here, plenty of good movies. I like V for Vendetta. Right. Well, you like um, you like violence in your film unless it somehow looks at the liberty movement, right? Like, you believe you've staked out your claim in the liberty movement and and what your sort of opinion yeah. is is there's, there should be no violent films that have anything to do with the liberty movement. I didn't say there should be no violent films. All I said was was this movie makes me uncomfortable. That's I feel like it's violence feel. fetishizing against the state and that made me believe that it's possible this guy could have killed his wife and family if he indeed is this, you know, gun guy. But Michael Dean says he's not a gun guy, or at least he wasn't two years ago. But maybe he became a gun guy within the last two years. He certainly had plenty of weapons in uh, the pictures that have been shown online of this guy, although Michael's claiming those are all props. I can't imagine Chris ever shooting Colleen, but Chris is most definitely a gun guy. If you mm -hmm. go up to Chris and ask him, are you a gun guy? He's going to say, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. So I, I Most don't think people won't do the things they'll do when they have a mental break. Of, I, I don't think being a gun guy contributes one way or the other I didn't to say the discussion it did, Rich. of whether he killed his wife. I didn't say that it did. Okay. I don't think that because he's a gun guy, he killed somebody. I think that he was a gun guy. He had a mental break. And when you have a mental break, which I've had, you are not in touch with who you normally are at that time. If you're having a mental break, you want to keep guns away from that person. That person should not have guns around them during the time frame of their mental break. And what I'm saying is if this guy surrounded himself with weapons and did indeed have a mental break, we don't know. But if he did, that could have been what led toward the, uh, the killings. I mean, maybe if he didn't have guns around, he would have stabbed them to death. I don't know. It was a mental break, in my opinion. If he or did maybe it, it at wasn't. All. It kind of reminds it. me of Archie Bunker's, would you feel better if they was pushed out of windows, little girl? <laughs> when she cites a statistic on how many people are killed with guns each year. Yeah, so I have but, no problem. Make the movie. I mean, make all the mm -hmm. movies you want. It's not my kind of movie. I'm not going to promote it, you know, as though something I would want to see or something I would enjoy watching. Um, make your movie, promote your movie, and have all the guns that you want. All I was saying was that those things about him, that he made this, what in my opinion is a violence fetishizing movie against the state, that uh, and that he also allegedly had guns, 
That mean, means it's believable that he could have had a mental break and killed his family. I don't know what actually happened. Nobody does. True. At least nothing we know of yet. Lose the winter blues and warm up with hot flooring deals from Lumber Liquidators. Thinking about hardwood? Consider bamboo. We've got the number one brand and we'll help you get it for less. Like Strand Bamboo. It's twice as hard as oak and for a limited time, it's only $1.99. Why pay as much as $4.99 for bamboo at other stores? We've got deals on over 70 styles from an incredible $1.79. Plus, pre-finished hardwood, laminate, and more for less than half what you'll pay somewhere else. And 18 months special financing. Now is the time to warm up your home with new floors. So visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DB Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want right here in these remaining moments. We have enough time for you. If you're already on the line, we're going to do our best to get you on. If you don't get on tonight, no worries. We're always here seven nights a week from 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time. So join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. With you tonight, it's Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And don't forget, if you want to help support Free Talk Live, please do your shopping with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com and enter Amazon 
through the different links you'll find there. There's Amazon US, Amazon Canada, and Amazon UK. You just click into the right Amazon for you, and you get your shopping taken care of, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of whatever it is that you're looking to purchase. So once again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. Now, interestingly, uh, we just we'd heard this the claim that there were uh, this this movie Gray State, uh, the producer or director of which has been found dead with his family in his home, ostensibly been there for weeks without having been dis- the bodies having been discovered. The claim is that the man shot his family to death or killed them and shot himself. And who knows what the truth is? I just said previously that it's a plausible claim, given the the violent, fetishistic nature of the the film that he made surrounding you know killing pe- agents of the state. Um, and I asked a question on Facebook. Michael Dean says the Gray State trailer does not fetishize violence against the state. Ian says it does. What do you think? So if you want to weigh in, you're certainly welcome to join us on the Facebook page. You can reach that by going to news.freetalklive.com. As we go to your calls, oh, there's something I wanted to correct. So the claim was that this movie Gray State, uh, we were wondering, well, what's the status of this movie? He raised $60,000 on Kickstarter two years ago in order to ostensibly make this movie it's now two years later he's dead what's the status of the film well Derek J came down he said someone informed him that this movie has been released in rough cut form online as of today now we found a link to that that movie as supplied by one of our uh, listeners and that's actually the movie in question this two hour rough cut is actually a documentary about Gray State so it's not actually the film it's not the feature film that uh, has yet been released. So we still don't so know the did status. Did he produce it? Could this be where the $60,000 went? The documentary? Right, because one of the things that I don't we're know who sort of speculating it. here, one of the one of my concerns is is that maybe he took the money, didn't really produce the movie the way he was supposed to, and now sort of things are catching up to him and he's feeling bad and, you know, whatever. Made the a pressure, documentary the about, pressure kills him. about making a trailer? I don't know. Let's go to John. He's in Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. So my point being, the movie itself is not what was released as a rough cut. That is a documentary that is a rough cut. Anyway, go ahead, John in Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, you guys were talking last night about the American Sniper film, and yes, I've seen it, and, and I've been watching uh, the public reaction, and this seems to be uh, one of those topics uh, where uh, people start making uh, threats or implied threats of personal physical violence. Um, people like uh, who uh, are reacting to criticism of the film or of Chris Kyle. And, uh, like, for instance, uh, Dean Cain, the actor who used to play Superman, who always seemed like a terribly nice guy, has been threatening Michael Moore and Seth Rogen on Twitter, saying, like, you know, he would beat them up. He could just wow. use his laser eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm wondering what you guys think about, you know, what is it about a topic that uh, brings out these these threats of physical violence in in you know especially in people who you would never think of it otherwise. I think it's the uh, basically near religious adherence to the American flag, mm. um, to the flag. It's flag worship um, and patriotism. These concepts, which are so very useful to those who are in power, but not particularly useful to those who uh, tend to, to do it. I'm not saying that there's not some role for it, that maybe people might be, you know, like in some separatist movement or whatever, they finally get their uh, their freedom, or, uh, you know, from, from some centralized England. government. But what's that? From England. England. Right. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> after that, at some point, it, it, it tends to morph into a monster. Yeah. I tend to agree, and uh, I, I guess my thought is that it, it also demonstrates a real moral insecurity about the question, is that you don't get that mad about something that you feel very confident about. You get mad when you feel like uh, the charges against uh, the military, against soldiers, these criticisms that are made, you get mad when you think that they might have some moral validity. Mm. Yeah, and I guess uh, you meant, mentioned Seth Rogen. I guess he's been making headlines over the last 24 hours for uh, speaking out in critique of the American Sniper film, calling it a Nazi propaganda film. And in so, which he 
he which he didn't he really do. All he fuck. said is he remind he said it reminded him of the movie that was playing in the third act of some other movie, Inglorious Bastards, which was Inglorious a movie about Bastards. Nazis. Right, but that's yeah. different than saying it reminds me of a of a Nazi propaganda film. Um, as well, text, that- it's one thing to say it's like a Nazi propaganda film. It's yeah. another thing to say it it reminds me of this movie that happens to be a, a Nazi propaganda Nazi, film. Nazi propaganda film. I'd say it's splitting hairs, but I yeah. get your point. Well, there there was uh, some use of color fiction filters in a meatloaf video that made it remind me of an Herbal Essences commercial. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I think in this case he was referring to what was a Nazi propaganda film in that other movie, Inglorious Bastards. Um, so go ahead, John. Anything else you want to share? Well, yeah, that's just that that's exactly the comment that Dean Cain was responding to right. when he said to Rogan, I want to kick your ass. Yeah, well, that's the that's the level of, uh, you know, discussion that you can expect uh, to be had on this issue. Right. Because there's no real intellectual thing that you can say to defend the violence of the military besides I'm going to kill you, too. Also, in 140 characters, you can't sort of rebut whatever. I mean, how, how are you going to rebut in 140 characters uh, whether or not this is a mo- Nazi propaganda film? I mean, you've got to lay a basis. You got to lay a foundation. You got to make your arguments. There's no way to do it in that yeah. period of time all you can really do is say bite me <laughs> thanks well, you get the same thing on facebook where you have more characters <laughs> thanks yeah. john for the call i appreciate it man let's uh, continue on facebook here. you have the time to write an essay if you want but I, I don't write essays for people for free we have hal in uh or al rather listening in bangor is it hal or al i'm not real clear on that uh, you know either one's going to do gentlemen but what i'm here to talk about is that in, in addition to rock and roll the primary <laughs> downfall of this country has been the eating of sweets yeah you know the great martin luther and our Lord and Savior, right? he had, please don't laugh gentlemen yeah, he advocated for the mortification of the flesh and i just want to say that this country has never recovered uh, from the devil's combination of peanuts and nougat which is known as the snickers bar <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, actually, actually, I just told him to say that I, I used to work for a uh, federal court, and I wanted to tell you guys that there's absolutely nothing to the sovereign citizen stuff. Uh, it has no effect whatsoever on the outcome of any trial. Oh, yeah, it's just a of bunch course. Of BS. And, but, I mean, I, I, there I are no magic words. As well. Precisely. I, this is not how they train you in law school. Uh, this is not how the courts work. You have to cite precedent. You can't just say magic words, and then yeah. all of a sudden we're forced to... You know, hand over some sort of decision. But how do you guys identify a sovereign citizen? What are the code words that you look for? Basically, because it identifies me when someone's a nut. So it's always handy to have that on hand. Um, well, you know, you don't really encounter them very often, believe it or not. I mean, even though we're here in New Hampshire, where we're trying to attract as many liberty-minded people here as possible, there have been very few people who've come here over the years. I mean, I can count them on one hand, uh, how many people have come here with this sort of sovereign citizen, I'm going to use magic words in court mindset. Um, I want to see it work, frankly. I mean, yeah. if somebody if somebody wants to try it, I'm willing to go and, yeah. uh, you know, Videotape, watch it, please. video it. Yeah. And, and by the way, yeah. of those people who I can count on one hand, it's not a whole hand that I need to count on. And, uh, and of those people who did come here, not a one of them ever actually went into a courtroom to prove their supposed uh, ideas. So well, if they come around, I, you'll I, know it because they'll start talking about what you should do in court and, uh, you know, using throwing out all kinds of theories. That's entirely correct. And I think that the thing is they're not really liberty activists at all or even pro-liberty. I think they're just very desperate people that think they can get themselves out of, you know, having committed a crime or having you know, gotten foreclosed upon in their home by using some magic words. And it's the same sort of magical thinking people have when they think they'll hit the lotto. That's uh, true. There are the there's some overlap between the sovereign mm. citizens and the liberty community, but it's not a complete overlap. That's there's true. some basis. I mean, when they when they say that they declare themselves a free man upon the land, apparently that does have some actual basis in the Magna Carta. The thing is that the Magna Carta was a uh, contract between the king and the nobles, and as such, it doesn't have any force in the United States, in although it cost- does have force in places like Australia and Canada. Where I the Constitution told. outlaws 
uh, no uh, writs of nobility or whatever it is. So the Constitution specifically outlaws nobility, and since the Magna Carta is a contract with nobility, it has no, uh, it, other than sort of being historical, has really no uh, precedent. On, uh, hey, by saw. the way, that was a great call, I have to say, Al, Hal, yeah. etc. I knew it was fake as Thank soon as you answered much, the gentlemen. first question, but it was awesome and very creative, and thanks for the <laughs> call tonight. We are out of time. We'll see you tomorrow online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. Check Rich out at nhjury.com. I'm a mu- On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,280, silver at $17.80, and Bitcoin is trading around $210. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? Could you feed them for even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash LibertyBeat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, four years before the White House blamed North Korea for a cyber attack on Sony, the U.S. government was reportedly hacking the country's computer system. In 2010, the National Security Agency began the operation, according to the New York Times, in a report published Sunday, which cites newly disclosed NSA documents. The NSA was able to infiltrate many of the computers and networks used by North Korean hackers and provided evidence that Kim Jong-un's computer wizards were behind the hack of Sony's email system. Sources told the Times. The evidence gathered by the software hidden to monitor North Korea's activities proved critical in persuading President Obama to accuse the government of Kim Jong-un of ordering the Sony attack. The controversial Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership has faced resistance from critics who say the deal would allow multinational corporations to override 